This episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast is sponsored by NatureBox. Order great tasting, healthy snacks right to your door. Forget the vending machine and get in shape for summer with healthy, delicious treats like everything bagel sticks. Support this podcast and get 50% off your first order. Go to naturebox.com slash rooster teeth. This episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast is brought to you by Grubhub. Order meals from your favorite takeout restaurants delivered right to your door without ever making a call. To get $5 off your first order over $10, go to grubhub.com slash rooster teeth and use the code podcast. That's grubhub.com slash rooster teeth. Stop wasting your money and time buying expensive razors. For just a couple bucks a month, dollarshaveclub.com will ship amazing quality razors right to your door. Come on, join the hundreds of thousands of guys who have upgraded to the smarter way to shave. Shave time, shave money. Join now at dollarshaveclub.com slash roosterteeth. Hey everyone. Good lord. Welcome to the noisiest, most dangerous <laughs> podcast to date. I don't know if you like can tell. Five minutes ago, <laughs> it's a fucking skies open Dude, and it's raining. I ran across uh, the street to get a Red Bull. I was outside maybe four seconds. Look at, look at the state of me. Gavin's very I can, wet. I can barely hear you, Bernie. I can barely hear Gavin. <laughs> it's so loud in here. It's crazy how loud it is. We're going to try to suffer through it. I think it's only going to rain like this for another five minutes or so. Should we just wait? Rather than delay <laughs> the podcast, okay. fuck it. We're, we're going to do it live. Right. So here we are this Let's week. Let's catalog this moment in history. We're gonna we're gonna miss this once we move to the new space mm. and everything's perfect. Yeah. If we survive. Ber- Bernie pointed out that the uh, the ceiling of this place behind me is actually starting to cave in. <laughs> Bernie's been staring at the ceiling for like ten minutes. Can we get just like, <laughs> dead silent, just waiting <laughs> to Can fucking we get a camera run. on the ceiling? Look at him. He's like a skin. He's pet. freaking out. It's somebody, horrible. Somebody opened the door and like the air conditioner blew little through. Bits, right, Gavin. And it, there's little bits of the ceiling bits. coming down. <laughs> it knocked over a napkin. He's like, "Where's that wind coming from?" <laughs> <laughs> we'll pull that over. Who's, what's happening? <laughs> so, uh, as you may remember, a couple weeks ago, we did have a, a pretty bad storm with uh, thunder snow, right? Yeah. And uh, we lost power, and uh, we had to end the podcast prematurely that night. I'm hoping that doesn't happen again tonight, but if uh, we luck, suddenly us. disappear, hey, who's uh, on this podcast? pray for us. Okay, so this week, we've got Gus, Gavin, Michael, Bernie, and Double Gus. <laughs> I'm Double Gus. The other one was Normal Gus. So, uh, Gus so three? three? This, no, two. Gus and Double Gus. It was like Double Gus two Gus's, though? It's the Gus Prime. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Gus X. <laughs> I think we're all a little uh, unnerved by the uh, by the rain at the moment. Is it worth dying for on? this podcast? Absolutely. absolutely it is absolutely worth, di- no. worth dying on this podcast. So this past weekend, I made a discovery. I made a personal discovery. Bernie looks so what, scared. Wait, I'm, I'm totally fine. I'm totally fine. I'm happy. I really caught hair. I'm actually upset for my one thing really quickly. Is that I was gonna wear? I got the, the guys from Catbug or from Couch and Hangover sent us a bunch of Catbug shirts, and I, I had my Catbug shirt on to wear. And I'm glad that Carol wore what? hers, and so we were all tweeting about the Catbug shirt, and. Uh, uh, so, yeah, Kara's wearing her catbug shirt, so I felt like I couldn't wear my catbug shirt. Right, so who gave her the catbug shirt, though? I did. Okay. And she fucking stabbed how, me in the back after the knowing, podcast. You give it to a man? How do you feel knowing <laughs> you that you and Kara own the same shirt? What's that? that? How do you feel now knowing <laughs> that you and Kara have the same thing in your wardrobe? Potentially, you could come to work one day and be like, oh, Kara's wearing well, the exact same thing as me. you already had the same bras that she did. That happens. <laughs> Stuff gets mixed up, you know? <laughs> it's fine. Don't worry about it. I don't, I, don't, I don't sweat it. Did you take a catbug shirt? They yeah, sent us a ton of them. I did. Yeah, good. So I, I made sure to take it. There's a really cool thing coming up there, but I don't know if I can talk about it yet. So what? talk about it later. Hey, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, how you doing? So what was the personal discovery you made this week? So I know I'm terrible at sports. I know I suck. Yeah, I we know that too. Anything, playing. Yeah, anything with a sport. Even Frisbee. Yeah, I'm terrible. So uh, there's a place up north in Austin called Top Golf, where you go and you can like drink and it's just a driving range there's like a whole bunch of different bays it's like a three-story building with a bunch of bays you just go and you just hit golf balls Dude, we, i went to uh i had dinner with Lindsay's family because her wedding showers this weekend mm-hmm. her dad was telling me about the exact same thing he, he golfs all the time yeah i don't golf for shit because i suck so i thought how hard can it be lame, right but... you put the fucking ball down you get a club you swing and you hit it yep it was the hardest thing i've ever done in my life for me to get a ball and hit it and it, so it would go in the direction I wanted was like, that's fucking amazing. Oh, that's Which, what it looks like. It's just like a whole bunch of Yeah, bays. it's a driving range. Right. Do, do they put like trucks and stuff for you to hit? Or there's, like, just... there's like a bunch of holes out in the field. Oh, there's uh, no like actual fun But it, it, like, it like keeps track of you. I don't know how it does it, if there's RFID in the balls, yeah. but you hit it and then it knows what <laughs> hole your ball went to and where it is on the field and oh. you get points based on how close you are. Yeah, there's sensors in the ball themselves. Yeah, and, I, I really it made me that. feel like a total piece of shit. So <laughs> yeah. it was like, I would swing as hard as I could, and the ball would be like, boop, like five yards. It'd be like, 
What? I, uh, I One time I hit it and it went sideways. Like I almost hit the person in the bay next to me. Dude, I've, I've had the T, because on, on the one I went to in the UK, you could press a button and the T would raise and lower. There's like four different levels. And uh, if you use a driver and put it on the highest T level, you just go straight under. So I would like hit them and it went up in the air and got stuck in a light. There was like a mesh over the light <laughs> and it just went. I was like, oh my God. And that same day I killed a rabbit. Wait, what? At the driving range? At like the driving range. Hit it. Hit a rabbit in the head with a golf ball. How do you feel about that? I felt bad at the time because it was like, it wasn't a clean kill. <laughs> oh God. Well, I mean, it sounds clean if you killed it with one golf ball. That's pretty yeah, clean. There was some uh, flailing. That happens. Brain. He could have been dead by then, though. Honestly, yeah, that's true. Could have disconnected. I'm the brain upset stem. you didn't cook him up. At least, at least, like vermin. cook your kill. A rabbit's not vermin. Is it not a rabbit? A rabbit? No. no. You're from Europe. Don't think you've been rabbit. rabbit I want to learn how to like properly eat wildlife. Like, You're kids. half Italian, for God's sake. What's that got to do with murdering rabbits? Itali well, Italians eat rabbits. Murdered him. That's do they? A fact. I, th I, I thought the French eat rabbits. French eat rabbit. French eat frogs too. That's the big thing about them. That's different than everybody else. They do. They eat frogs. Well, that's the one Frog thing legs. you say about the French. They that's eat like frogs. delicacy. I'm pretty sure Italian. There's a lot of rabbit in Italian cuisine. I think. I don't know. I don't think I've ever eaten rabbit. Well, you've killed. You know what's always confused me about killed Italian cuisine? Too. Stop. Stop killing animals. So Marco Polo went to China and discovered one of the big things he brought back to the old world. I mean, it's weird to say you go to China and come back to the old world, but one of the things he brought back was noodles. That was one of the big discoveries there. And it wasn't until they, Christopher Columbus discovered America, or you know, explored America, that we got tomatoes and potatoes. Both tomatoes and potatoes are indigenous to North America, or to the Americas. So what the hell was the Italian cuisine like before they had either noodles or tomatoes? Probably olives in that. What, just like what? Olives. What? Olives. Just olives and cream? And red that wine and bread. And that's it. Grapes, wine and all that. I said wine already, didn't and I? And shitty pizza. <laughs> so, I guess... But no tomato. I guess yeah. it would be cream... When, when did Marco Polo do that? Like, what that's year was that? a good question. That? I was just trying to think of that as I was saying it. Do you think he ever played Marco Polo? <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> invented it. I probably Me. invented it. <laughs> Me. Me. You. <laughs> <laughs> why, is that, why is that a game? Was Marco Polo, like, ever lost Is that what you play in a swimming pool? Yeah, yeah, and then you had your one person shuts their eyes and then they cheat. They always different look. to water polo. You guys, yeah. it's very different. Do you guys and have the fish out of water rule? The what? Do you play that fish, fish out, out of water? water? Yes. When you catch someone yeah, who's out you, of the pool. Yeah. If you yell and fish that, out of the water when someone's out of the water, they're automatically out. Why would they get out of the water? So you can't find them. You right, can't Mar get tagged if you're not in the pool. Marco Polo is in the late 1200s. Okay, the late 1200s. So then uh, the question is, what did Romans eat? Yeah. What they so I guess that would be like what it would be like the Roman diet, olives, olives, grapes, wine, 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 and wine, wine twice, <laughs> double <laughs> wine, things. double wine, but double gus. So one of the cool things I, I sent a picture of it to Patrick and hopefully he gets it in time where he can put it up. But uh, you're talking about the golfing range. One of the coolest things ever is this is a batting range that's in Las Vegas and they have like the green monster from Fenway. Up there, so you go. Is it like the appropriate distance? Yeah, and size and everything. So you can just go out there and try to crank homers on all the different walls from the different stadiums, basically. <laughs> That's like, cool. All the iconic stuff. But That's like, awesome. Usually, usually, a batting cage, you're like in a net. But this is a place that I always want to go to, and I haven't found anybody who'll go with me. Uh, RT Life. I would go for RT Life, and you yeah. just go. It's like a batting range where they fire the balls at you, and you can just crank them as far How as far you can. How far does it fire the balls? I'm like 85. Oh, well, it'd be awesome. I, think I think it's the fast, fast is 85, Should slow is like 65. It'd be awesome yeah. if you, you, could, if you could select different pitchers, like their top speeds. Like, I want the Nolan Ryan and get like something over you'd 100 miles an hour. You never You never would. Come well, on, you can't. I, I was very successful hitting a golf ball, a stationary target. I'm sure 100 mile an hour baseball is like nothing. I think the hitting, they try to rate like the different things in sports, like what are the hardest things to do in sports. And I think everyone pretty much agreed that hitting... A major league fastball is probably the hard, single hardest thing to do in sports. Is it because you can't react in time? It's just, it's phenomenally hard. You're hitting a round ball with a round bat, and it's moving at 85 miles an hour, and pr or 85 to 95 yeah, miles an hour, and probably dropping. So, like, on the bat and the ball is so, the window of goodness. I don't, I, every time I watch a batter in the major leagues hit a baseball, I don't know how they do it at that level. Like, I can hit it when my friends are throwing it. But man, if somebody's throwing a ball, a ball like 90 well, to well, 105 miles also an hour, Also, they make like those that. quick judgments. Like you'll see them check a swing, yeah. where they're going to swing and stop. Like, what was it? Like in what fraction of a second were they like, no, 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 stop. Yeah. And then they like, they don't swing. Because it's, it's usually it's 20 years of batting practice. practice. Right. Like there's something that makes them think, no, like, this is going to be a bad one. See, the rain's getting better. Yeah. yeah. It's I'm getting feeling nice better about this podcast oh, already. Gus, I hear you. 
Yeah. Hello. I hear Michael's here. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. It's like we can have a real podcast now. Um. Yeah. Ten hardest things to do in sports: hitting a baseball, driving a race car. What the fuck is that? I can do that any day. Bullshit. Pole vaulting, hitting a long straight tee shot. Number four. Mm. Returning a serve. What tennis? What the hell is no, landing a fucking quad? Something else that doesn't have serves. Or volleyball. Dude, right? you tell Sports me it's harder to do right. tennis, badminton. Let, let me let me see on this list. What's harder to do? To return a serve from a professional tennis player. Those are fast, fast yeah. serves. Squash. Or landing a quad in a in ice skating, figure ice skating. I figure a quad, right? I would like I, that's just like a that's a new thing, right? They just invented that a few years ago. What is that? Quad toe loop requires you to balance. Height and rotation while skating on a metal blade a quarter of an inch wide. During a successful quad jump, a skater will reach heights of 18 inches above the ice and experience 300 pounds of centrifugal force, all while spinning four times in just over 0.5 seconds. Nobody can do that. Yeah, it's when they jump, the, f- the, f- the skater jumps and spins four times before they land again. F- so they're spinning almost once every 0.1 of a second. Yeah. 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 Did 0. you uh, one two five? Very good. Look at the fucking yeah, I mean, math on Michael. You love your slow mo photography. Do you love the stills from the Olympics of like the divers and the, the figure skaters when they're caught like mid rotation and what they look like? Well, and their faces are all like, like this. <laughs> no, I hate that. You know why I hate that? It's the same thing as people sending me fucking screenshots of a video <laughs> that I'm in. Of course, everyone looks stupid in a fraction of a second while they're doing something. Of course they do. It's the yeah. same thing. Also, oh, look, it totally, I paused the podcast and look at the stupid look on Gus's face. It totally ruins how graceful that uh, that move was as well. Oh, I know. Because it looks like it ruins the grace of this. It? Yeah, there's nothing graceful about that. It's all grace. <laughs> My middle name's Gus, Grace. Gus, when are you going to spin your face four times in five seconds on this <laughs> podcast? <laughs> all right, rounding out the list of this is running a marathon, biking in the Tour de France, saving a penalty kick. That would be very hard. Yeah. And uh, downhill skiing. Did I tell you about the time where, have you ever, <laughs> ever heard of Ryan Giggs? No. Very famous footballer. I'm not sure if he still plays. Played for Man U. He's like one of the most famous English footballers. I was filming him once, and um, I'd set up my downloads for the Phantom, like in one of the corners, and then they moved the spot where he was shooting from. So he ended up just sh- shooting these really hard free kicks because that was what we were filming, and they kept going like closer and closer towards my table. So eventually, I like I swapped with the other dude I was with, and all I did was stand in front of my table like a goalkeeper while Ryan Giggs pelted footballs at me oh and it was God. one of the most surreal moments of my life because i felt like I, I was like saving a penalty that ryan giggs was kicking except the thing was i bet you had no chance of blocking it you just put your body in front of your yeah. most expensive piece I, of equipment so it hit you instead i stood in front of all the hard drives all the uh, the footage and i went like this whenever <laughs> he kicked <laughs> and he hit me a couple of times he did yeah he apologized every time nice bloke well, <laughs> when we were filming the uh, <laughs> after he kicked me when we were filming that most recent immersion <clears throat> the split screen one uh, one of you fired a shot that almost hit Patrick. Uh, oh, yeah, with yeah. All the equipment. I, I posted Dude. in my journal, I posted a photo of that, the, that setup they had. And we were on the other side of the, the course. I don't know yeah, how one were, of us were, done it. There were a bunch of us standing there, because, you know, you all were literally on the other side of the field, standing there without masks on, just, you know, <laughs> watching, looking at the feeds. And on those the, paintballs will put an eye out. Yeah, and it, it came flying out of nowhere, and, like, everyone just stopped and looked at it, and everyone immediately went and grabbed a mask. Yeah, yeah well, nobody stopped and looked at it. I mean, it hit... And everybody instinctively just kind of like dropped or fell to the side. Like, it was like, it hit that metal, like that hollow metal wall right behind us and went, tang. Patrick looked white as a sheet. <laughs> well, especially for the people that were filming like behind us inside those little buildings and shit. Like, I know JJ was behind me a bunch <laughs> of the times. And <laughs> those things are you... so hard to see out of. You How know? many times did you shoot JJ? <laughs> I don't think I shot him once. Uh. He, he didn't say I hit him once, but like, I'm going in. And I turn right and I'm looking for you. I didn't see you. I turn around and see like a shadowy figure and just start unloading. And I see JJ like, stop, stop, stop. And they like run outside and I'm like, sorry. Because they weren't even wearing padding. They're wearing masks, but I, then just t shirts. I couldn't see shit. If something moved, I just fired wildly. It's like, it's like war. Yeah. War is hell. You yeah, that as video. you learn firsthand. Yeah. You fell in a hole three times. Three times, yeah. I couldn't believe you fell in the third time. Like it was the you second could. one. The second one was boy howdy. <laughs> the third one is like right That's at the beginning. Surprise. The first thing you did was walk in that hole again. It looked bad, like watching it. The second one looked bad because it's like you ended up slumped over the other side of the hole. I was like, just, yeah, that it. one had a hard uh, moment. 
it looked bad, but watching it, I'm just like, that does not do it justice. Yeah, yeah I thought like, you had like knocked your wind out on that second one. It looked like you got deflated by wearing, it. Wearing like even you watching the feed, you see what happens. It's like, oh, he fell in the hole. I'm like, ah, you know what I mean? Like I'm walking and the ground's yeah. gone. I'm just spinning through the air and I can't see shit. That was and then probably, I'm getting shot with paintballs. That was the most. <laughs> un- I didn't even injure myself I, apart from getting shot with paintballs, which really hurt. The most. Yeah. It was the most uncomfortable thing I've done for Rooster Teeth was. Just having that paper mask push the goggles over my eye sockets and like put pressure on the bridge of my nose. So I'm walking around like this most of the time, like trying to like <laughs> push back against the goggles. It was really uncomfortable, wasn't it? Mm. And then the uh, the transmitters you would hit on door frames all the time and stuff. Yep. That setup was pretty. It how was, much do you think that pack weighed that you guys were hauling around? 50 pounds? You're full of shit. I don't know how much 50 pounds. Is. pounds. <laughs> I, I, I guess shit. 20, maybe. Yeah, I was going to say 20. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say probably 20, 25. Well, you know, 20 pounds can be pretty serious. We, you we just, actually like, used a lot of No, it sucked running around and stuff. Holes. That's why I know 50, I'd be like, no. Can't no, get out of the hole. Can't do it. Stay in the hole. <laughs> I'm just going to stand here Just cover me with dirt. We actually used a lot of the technology that we used to produce the podcast out there in the field. Yeah. yeah. Like the video switcher. and then we, we even joked. I was saying to Patrick before we started filming, I was like, can we just do a podcast right from here? And he's like, yeah, pretty much. We got yeah. most of the stuff. Yeah, like all of the infrastructure to run the live stream was out there yeah. to mix your signals together. Also, and he had antennas them. all around him, and we were convinced that he was going to get cancer somehow. <laughs> there were some serious antennas Still out there. The For a while, we were working on trying to uh, increase the range so that uh, you guys could see more of the field. And we raised the antennas, and they stopped working. Like, they worked less. Oh, really? Like, we had to lower them back down to a certain height. And oh, it was wait. like, that was the sweet spot where you all had the most range over the course. It was sweet. That was really fun. It was to make sick. There. I think it's probably okay at this point, too, to talk about an immersion that we didn't make, that we had a chance to make. There was one we were going to potentially make with uh, the MMA, or a specific MMA league that you may have heard of. But it just kind of didn't work out because... First, they wanted we were going to have you guys train using techniques in the game, and then we were going to actually have you fight an MMA fighter. They wanted you guys to fight a female champion who probably would have beat the shit out of you. But I definitely was like, would have beat the shit, out of, beat the shit like, out of him in about three seconds. You don't even like. You don't even need to say probably. Like <laughs> but seriously, it doesn't matter whether I, the arm has tits and a vagina attached to it. It's still going to punch hard. Or the chokehold, when she fucking wraps her yeah. legs around you and chokes you out. But. The other one was, I said, no, why don't we just get, like, a guy that gets on there and just, like, wails on him? Because I didn't want, like, the message of, like, you guys fighting a girl didn't seem like the most appropriate thing. Even though we all recognized she would have beaten the right. shit out of you guys. So we didn't For do sure. it because you didn't want us to punch women. Ah, I didn't want that. Yep, pretty much. That's where the whole thing kind of, like... But what did they say about the guy? So they didn't want him punching girls either. It's basically what, what it came it? down to, Michael. <laughs> they said, well, you... I can understand from their perspective. They said, no trained MMA fighter is going to want to be seen beating up a bunch of a couple guys who've never been trained before. Apparently it's totally fine for the female fighter to beat up untrained guys. Uh. Like that was that was palatable, but they said like they it would just look like he was just beating the tar. <laughs> you guys were like, well that's what we want is them to get the shit beat out of him. They were like, "Nah, it just won't come across right." You're not right. even telling the whole evil story that it was supposed to be. And the fact that the whole time we were going to like he told us after it wasn't happening. He's like, "We're well, not going to happen." But we were going to the whole time tell you you're going to fight each other. Then at the last second, we're going to have the MMA fighter who was training you fight you. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> that was going to fight but you guys. that would have been amazing. Like, you'd have all been, yeah, like, getting ready to reveal. fight you. Yeah, and then he just beats the tar out of that you guys. That would have been great. It just didn't work out I'm for glad we didn't do that one. one reason or another. That, that would have been good. So, yeah. uh, you, I guess you talking about, like, immersions that got canceled made me think about this interview I heard earlier today. Um, I was listening to NPR and on the Marketplace show, they were interviewing um, the president and co-founder of uh, Pixar, uh, Ed Catmull, I think was his name. Yeah. And uh, they were talking about, like, the, I guess the guy just, just had, uh, has released a book and he was talking about how at Pixar, you know, all of the movies when they start making them suck and it's their job to make them not suck. And he's like, and you know, sometimes we've had some failures in the past. And the interviewer goes, oh, what? I wasn't going to bring it up, but like Cars 2 and Mar- Monsters University? <laughs> And Ed Catmull goes, well, no, I meant movies that we killed internally that we never right. actually released. Yikes. And I was like, oh, I was, it was so cringeworthy. I was like, I had to turn the volume down on the radio. <laughs> I couldn't keep listening to it. I was like, oh, my God. <sighs> what? How the fuck do you recover from that? Uh, you don't. Why did he name two movies? He named Just two one. movies. <laughs> and you could tell that Ed Catmull was like taking it back. He's like, well, what? Uh, no, well. I meant like internal movies that never saw the light of day. It was like, oh my god! I just want to call under a rock and die at that yeah. point. Yeah, that we've talked about that before. There's like some people don't realize it's like I I went to a film festival one time years and years ago. 
met somebody who I really admired as a director, but he's made like off and on stuff. I mean, it's be a director that you know every director Which has director? up down up movies and down movies. <laughs> and uh, I saw a guy walk up to him and just go. Hey man, I'm a big fan of the movie where everybody works in the convenience store. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, the movie, the the movie with the uh, with Ben Affleck, that was a piece of shit. <laughs> and that really sucked. I was like, what kind of fucking asshole do you have to be to walk up to somebody and tell them that some they make sucks? Who was you know it? What I mean? <laughs> What's that? I don't know the guy, but he was talking to Kevin Smith. <laughs> but it was just like it was so it was so shitty to do that. I mean, it's just like, but I mean that happens to everybody. I think like some people have. Has anyone ever done that to you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course. Yeah. I don't think I've ever talked about it. Caleb. One time, I I got so mad at Caleb before he worked here because the fucking kid <laughs> shot his fucking mouth off at me one time. We were working on Griff Ball. Like it was. Uh, I don't know if you recall for like the first seven years of this company, but we make Red versus Blue, and that was our main show. And then when Red versus Blue is in the off season, we do another thing like Immersion or Griff Ball or Strangerhood, which I uh -huh. fucking remiss to bring up uh, on the podcast, <laughs> or Archie Shorts, like, because the fucking, you guys and your goddamn... I didn't do anything. Uh, I, I told, Why do I, you always put this I, on me? I totally blame Ray's you and Ray. I totally okay. blame you and Ray. Me. But fucking, and I had to talk to Caleb when he first started working here, too. I said, I don't know if you know this or not, but I was genuinely pissed at you for a very long time because you you just said this fucking snarky-ass thing about between season five and season six, which I think was like four months break between those two things. And Caleb just one time goes, Yeah, you know, you're not, what are you doing these days? Because it doesn't seem like you're doing anything. You're just being fucking lazy and not doing anything. Like basically resting on your laurels and living off your past success. <laughs> and I was cat. like, it's been, it's been two months and I've been working on fucking Griff Ball. We're in the Griff Ball leagues. And he was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Fuck off. You know, I was like, what a dick. What did you reply? Nice frisbee. No, no, I just like, you, uh, I, is that I, the I, first time you hurt his leg? Gavin, is, Gavin <laughs> has been, no, it was one of those things where I just like, honestly, honestly, uh, Caleb wasn't working with us then, uh, and I just, I wrote him off, honestly. I was just like, well, you know, that guy. See, if that was me, because I can, you can, if I write someone off, they're gone. How did you get him back? Well, how did you, I, I don't know, somebody hired him. No, but when he, when he six first, months ago, when he, when he first, I don't know if Caleb's in the building or whatever, when he first started working here, I actually took him out, and I was like, I don't know if you know this or not, but I actually had a really big problem with you. And we should get this straightened out. I don't want you to know I don't have a problem with you anymore, but I did for a while. And here's what it was. And we had a man to man about it, and we were all cool. Oh, yeah. Caleb's one of my favorite people who works at the company now. You guys fix, tossed the frisbee. Setting the bar low, huh? Favorite people who isn't John Reisinger. How you doing? Hey. Hot stuff. Yeah, uh, but no, so that's the kind of thing. I mean, you've been on Xbox Live with me back before you worked here <laughs> when somebody would say something to me, and I'd be like, go fuck yourself. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. I also watch you rage quit Halo a lot. <laughs> It happens. It happens sometimes. <laughs> I would literally see your character. I don't know if you did it on purpose, but you would sometimes. We would be losing. It'd be like oddball or something, and you'd be at our base, and I would see your character sigh and then drop dead. <laughs> like you could hear him. And yeah, just he'd just like, be like, "God, guys, what? <sighs> Quit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. Fuck you and guys. sometimes you'd immediately come back. Like we'd go to the lobby, and you'd be waiting there. And uh, sometimes you'd be gone for good. Yeah, but I fuck this. I had to get out. I was trying to find a better party. I feel be bad, else. though, because uh, we've just been slagging off Caleb's frisbee. I feel bad about Mostly it Mostly you. Well, no, we. it's, it's like 95%, it's, it's, a, it's a prime target. It's just a, it's such an easy target, and I think he knows that. But I appreciate that it's a very athletic sport. It's just, you're still throwing a frisbee. Yeah. I'm and trying to think of if, if yeah, you can place it. Here's what hates people on crutches. He made we, that I really do, clear. I do, I hate people on crutches. We were actually talking with Caleb about it. I said, hey, we came in that morning. I said, just so you know, we kind of talked shit on the podcast about your ankle injury. Because I heard... And I said, I said, I said, but I did want to point out that I did say that you're in the best shape of probably anybody else in this company. Yeah. You he are. He posted those pictures of him diving for frisbees where he is completely horizontal, like 90 degrees horizontal. Like an Irish setter reaching out for that frisbee <laughs> before taking it back worth. to its master. If at my Except age, if Irish I did that, doesn't break if, his bones. if I laid out at my age like that, I, I would hope that my grave would be on the ground. Like I'm, I'm just like my last dive into my <laughs> You'd grave. You do that towards a tombstone. Or a hospital bed. <laughs> yeah. But the, uh, so I said to him, I said, I pointed that to him because he goes, yeah. And I was saying, you know what we should do? We should get, and he totally agreed, said he even had a plan for it because he's thought about it so much. Get like six of our guys and get just three of his guys who know how to play ultimate frisbee and have us go out and try to play against three of them who know how to play even marginally well. Six I would say two might be more fair. And watch them destroy us. First one to break a bone. I can guarantee you none of us would get injured. We just would be out of I'd breath. I'd be like... No, I missed that one. The thing <laughs> can you our, can our passes? Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> like this. You just start going off into the distance. Rolling it. Yeah. Interesting. Or they do that frisbee throw where you go like this and you throw it and it goes, 
Funk. <laughs> Sideways. It's like me golfing. Down. Just five yards then down into the ground. Listen, man, golf is hard. Golf's really hard. It's uh, I tried for, uh, I think, a decent amount of time. A lot of my friends in college golfed. First of all, I don't have the patience for it. 18 holes, way too much golf. It's just, it's too it much. It takes forever, too. It takes for fucking ever, like a four man. Hour, four hour, yeah. five hour thing. You should be able to, not, it should be maximum nine holes, and that's it. And then you, if you want to play 18, you play golf twice. That's the way it works. <laughs> you just play it backwards. <laughs> you have to hit the flag. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. No, you like second course. I know what you meant. You yeah. gotta get, make it back to you. You gotta get it like on top of your tee. That's See, the in final. my game of golf, you put the ball on a flag and you hit it. Yeah. Don't and hit, you the hit the mic. Then you hit the mic as well. But gol- golf is one of the few sports that I think translates. It's more fun to play on the on a console than it is to play in reality. <laughs> That's what I kept thinking. I was like, let's fucking play this in GTA 5. I will beat the <laughs> shit out of everyone in this goddamn you building. You fucking crank it straight as an arrow, I bet. Yeah, fucking <laughs> A, 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 done. <laughs> <laughs> fucking walk off. Yeah, I, 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 know, how to, I know how to go. golf. Duh. You I can, can skip it. walking, too. Yeah, it's the best. <laughs> yeah. It's like... It's amazing. I'm always that friend. I'm like the best shitty golfer ever because I go out with my friends and I won't sit out there and be like, you know, wherever my friend's balls go, that sounds horrible, wherever (laughs) they go, that's where I drop my ball. Like, I don't like try to like play from wherever. I just go, fuck it, that ball's gone. I'm never going to see that one again. Then I bring like 40 balls out there with me and then I just go with wherever my friends are, where they, whoever's in my cart basically, I just drop with them. I don't give a shit. (laughs) <laughs> they don't take it seriously I'm just so fucking lousy I've been lousy at it for 20 years I don't years. like golf because of the etiquette I went with my friend once and he had a golf bag and I don't have any golf clubs so I just borrowed one of his clubs and the like a groundskeeper was like you can't play golf without a bag and I was, I was like I've got one I've got two clubs in my hand Fuck I'm it. gonna go and rent a bag so I can put them in and he was like yeah go and rent a bag so I just had a golf bag with two golf clubs it's a racket <laughs> what if you had bag. one club would you still have had to get the bag you can't really play with one club yeah why not we need a putter. Yeah. So driver would you have a, a driver putter. and a putter? Yeah. I had a driver and a putter, and my friend had all the different irons and stuff. Wedges. Oh, yeah. A putter. So putter. yeah, technically you need more than two clubs. So you could have just gone with one and borrowed all your friend's other clubs. I guess, yeah. So don't fucking talk he, to me like he, an idiot for or, saying what if you only had one club. Or a crazy idea, put both clubs in your friend's bag. Yeah. So not go crazy, hey. Right, and then... <laughs> calm down. But they're I, in a bag. Even though I'm shitty at it, I appreciate it. Like, I know golf is hard. Can you hand me the opener? opener? Yeah. Here, toss Where, it over. Is it? Even though oh, I'm yeah. terrible at it, I, I do appreciate how hard it is. Sorry, dude. And that it's a real sport. <laughs> there are some God. things where it's like, I just don't recognize. And I even like the <laughs> ultimate frisbee thing I'm cool with. But like, do you ever have one of the friends, and the guy that I know like this is Jack... Where he's like really good at air hockey and always wants you to fucking play he's air hockey. He's good at air hockey. He's good at disc golf. <laughs> foosball. Horseshoe game thing. Throwing. Any bar related game. Doesn't everybody have that friend though who's really good at air hockey? And they're like, oh, fuck it. Come on, right now. Play me air yeah, hockey. Play like, me. And no, they're like, yeah, I'm not going to play it. Yeah, it's it's Jack. You're way, too excited. That. You're, all, you're way too excited about it. You know the it. same guy. Yeah, but I would, Jack's not a friend. He's a guy. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Well, he said something everybody, everybody has that in their life. Somebody who's like really good at foosball or air hockey. Yeah. Fucking hate both those things. Air hockey is just such a fucking. Why'd you call tr- it foosball? So it's called it's called man. foosball. What do you call it? Table football. Kicky, kicky. Table football. Because what you're doing is you're just saying the German word for football. And that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it's like German football. You're watching little guys play. I never understood it. You're saying that the American approach to football is doesn't make sense. At the novelty level, it doesn't make any sense at any level at all. Nothing. Do you ever play Sabutio? What's that Sabutio? It's the uh, little you have the little footballers on the mat, and you flick them, and the little tiny ball. It's like a board game for football. Oh. Never heard of that. We we have a like a it's it's like air ho- uh, not air hockey but ice ice hockey where you like slide the guys forwards oh, and backwards right. mm-hmm. and do that stuff. And then we used to have. What the fuck's wrong with you? Don't make fun of me. That's the way the game fucking works. I'm just making the motions, dickhead. So we used to also have this board game when I was a kid back in the 1950s. And uh, it was like it had American footballers and they would sit on a field and the field would just it would vibrate, vibrate. Yeah. like this. It would just vibrate and then they would move. And then, like, so it's it was completely random. Completely <laughs> random. Just utter horseshit. You, you try to find a table that with a slight tilt to it. <laughs> that way everything would go in your favor. Or you just lift it up like this, lift up your end so that the fucking guys would all go that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you just let them jiggle and watch it, and that's the game. Have you never seen that before? That I fucking haven't. Cheap ass vibrating toy. Uh, sadly, I have seen this. It's, 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 wait, it's before our time, too, guys. Yeah, I think, it's, I think you're right. I think it's from like the 50s or 60s, but. You know, back Sabutio. then. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, is that Sabutio right there? Yeah. What the fuck is that? <laughs> you flick him at the ball. 
You, and, uh, flick, you flick, flick him flick with the, the whole, ball? The whole I, dude? I never really knew how to play it because I would get bored immediately. And We're looking start, at like, these little football players that are on, like, they're like, looking on, like, pedestals. Uh, and for yeah. scale, wobble, that's like pedestals. A, like that's wobbly like, pedestals. And I like an inch high, maybe. Ping pong, that's another fucking sport. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> that was it. We got a lot of respect for Robert Coo at Pin Arcade. We're about to go to PAX this coming week. The, the fuck, he's, he has the charity golf tournament, and it's like, I keep thinking every year, I should get good at golf just to go to the video game golf tournament. I'm not going to do it. They should have a virtual GTA 5 edition of that, too. Yeah, so play along go. at home. I'll play that. That makes sense. I'll, I'll play a charity golf tournament in a murder simulator. You know, <laughs> I, my brother got a job. He was, uh, he was out of work for like two years. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. I'll pass that along to Michael. Thank you. But uh, he got a job, and I, after two years, I was like, what the, what, how'd you land this cush gig that you got? He got a really nice job. And he said, a buddy that I play MMOs with uh, had an opening, and so I got it. So, like, MMOs are like the new golf, where people go out and, like, play together and make business deals and right. shit like that. <laughs> I've, so. I've got something I want to say about MMOs, but yeah. I want to read this Is first. it on that pad of the, yours? The, the first comes a wonderful message from our excellent sponsor. Uh, I want to thank Grubhub for supporting the Rooster Teeth podcast. Grubhub provides food delivery from your favorite local restaurants. Grubhub is available in more than 600 U.S. cities from nearly 28,000 takeout restaurants. Uh, here's how Grubhub works. Um, just give Grubhub a try. Uh, they gave us a, uh, a chance to try it out, and I, I used it to order from Schlotzky's right up the road. Um, and it's great. You just go, and it just aggregates all of the restaurants near you. I ordered the original, a large original. It's so good. Uh, but you, if you don't like that, you can customize it. You go through. Uh, you can search, order, eat. With, and the best part, you don't have to call anyone. Oh, God. So perfect for me. I just fucking did it all online. Didn't have to talk to anyone. You must be so happy. It's free to use. You just pay for the food. You type in an address. It tells you the restaurant's delivered to you. Shows you photos of food. You can search by cuisine, restaurant name, menu item. When you find what you're looking for, you place your order online or by phone, uh, free of charge. Uh, you can opt in to get order updates via text, which I did, uh, so you know when your food's on the way. It gives you access to reviews, coupons, special deals. Grubhub's got 24-7 customer service team that tracks each order and makes sure you get exactly what you want. Uh, and for our listeners, they've got $5 off your first order over $10. So go to grubhub.com slash roosterteeth and use code podcast. It's free money. It's like free $5 to eat. You got to eat anyway. Uh, so thanks to Grubhub for supporting Rooster Teeth Podcast. Everyone, please go to grubhub.com slash roosterteeth. Use code podcast to show your support. I am all about getting food efficiently and not having to talk to someone. Here's the, the funny thing about that. Was the, best. the place that you order from, Schlotzky's, that you use Grubhub to order from, they have, in the airport, they have a Schlotzky's sandwich shop. It started machines, in Austin. Right? How far have they gone? Are they all around the country now? Uh, I think they were for a while. They may have contracted a bit. I got this. D- anyway, I'll talk about this in a second. Um, <laughs> they have a, at the airport, they have a Schlotzky's and you can order via kiosk. And I think we've talked about that before because that must make you so fucking happy that you can sit there and tap on a computer. Yeah, because... One, I don't have to talk to anyone. Right, and your order will get right. Two, right. right. There's right. no mistranslation. The person doesn't fucking mishear me. It's I am irresponsible. I am responsible for my own destiny. So yeah. now this sounds like the home game. Yes. Grubhub sounds like the home game Absolutely. for that experience. Also, you, must, you must be in heaven. Those machines at Schlotzky's, I like them because you swipe your card and it's like, hey, this is what you had last time. Do you want it again? It's just like, yes. Mm-hmm. One button. You got it again. Yeah, it's, they're, they're there the they best. are. They're, they're great. I wish all food interactions were via a computer and I didn't have to talk to anyone. Yep. Uh, really? Yeah. You, do you ever? Let me ask you a question. When you go in to a restaurant and you say, "I want this," or "I want this," like I want the ahi tuna sandwich, or I want the Cobb salad, I want one of those two things. I say, "Who the fuck are you?" And how are you? Why are you in my head? But go ahead. Okay. And then, how do you determine which one of those you can eat? Um. Would you ever ask the waiter, "Hey, which one of these is better? Which no, one would you recommend?" No. Never. Never, never would ask a waiter for a recommendation never. of any kind. I do it for beer. Like, what's a good beer you got? Yeah, you know Especially what? From in the I may do place. it for beer. Like, if, if we're up in the Northwest, like Oregon or Seattle, yeah. I'll be like, I want what's your favorite a, beer? A, a, this style of beer. What's a good one of that? I did it in Budapest. Beer? I did it in Australia. It's just like the easiest. Fucking brag about it, Mr. Jet Setter over here. <laughs> yeah, it's like the oh, re- I was the in only... Budapest, uh, sitting at a local pub. I was. I, said, I was hungry, Give me Gavin. your finest ale. <laughs> was that what you did, you fucking stuck-up prick? Jesus. <laughs> that was so uncomfortable. Nah, he was bragging about it. <laughs> it was like, a, it we was were talking li- about literally that subject, and I just did it like a week ago. Yeah. I'm sorry for bringing it up, Gus. I went to Budapest, and I went to Australia, and I was finding their local craft beer. Gosh, don't even get him started once he comes back from Boston. <laughs> <laughs> When's the last time you were there? <laughs> what an overreaction. All right, what, what are you going to say next? Um. <laughs> so I was right, though. I would never ask for a beer because... When you ask for a beer, 
They're like, hey, what's your best beer? They go, well, we have the Lighthouse IPA. We have the Running Monkey Brown Ale. Uh, we have the Orange Sea Pilsner. And you're like, none of that fuck. You're saying names. It doesn't mean anything to me <laughs> Basically whatsoever. Basically, what they're saying is we have beer. And beer. Right. So in the other example. That's what I have about craft beer. They just name a bunch of shit you've never heard of well, it. the other you know example, I mean? you, you ask, you know, what would you rather have, the ahi tuna sandwich or the Cobb salad? What are they going to say? Oh, the Cobb salad's got an egg on it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> They're just going to tell you what you already know about it. What I'm saying, what's a good beer you have? They just list a bunch of beers and you're still fucking picking it random so based on whichever then, name you like. Whatever best. one I hear last, I'll say I'll have that one. Right. I'll, I'll I have wanna, the one I don't remember stout, the first two. <laughs> basically. Yeah. Wait, yeah, whatever it is. That's such a, that's just horse shit. I wish you would, I'm, I'm with beer the way you are with everything else. I'm just like, just give me whatever because yeah. I'm just going to pick something totally at fucking random. It's like picking a novel off of a shelf. You just, you do, you, you totally pick by what the cover is. That's it. Or that's the all author. You care. What? Or the author. Well, if you know about it, but if you don't know, you're just like, yeah, this looks fucking good. Who doesn't know any authors? Well, you might've read all the books by the author. Yeah, you may, you may also be in a, a place that doesn't have any books by the authors, you know. All right. Fair play. All right, there we go. Thanks, Suck Gabo. Up, prick. Hey, speaking of books, you guys watched the <laughs> first episode of Game of Thrones season four last night? Yes, of course. It's fucking bad. That was badass. That was a good episode for the Hound. Yeah. Right, do you want even yeah. want to talk about it? Yeah, sure. Well, I mean, don't talk about spoiler stuff for people who are bitches, or in the, or in the words of the uh, yeah. the Hound. So, what was amazing? Cunts? Some people are cunts. <laughs> was Is that what he said? The number what? a lot of people over who over were again? surprised by the fact that HBO Go didn't work immediately like i saw so many angry tweets where people were like oh way to go hbo go way to not work just fucking watch it i guarantee you everyone bitching about it doesn't actually subscribe to hbo because <laughs> oh, if they subscribed to hbo they would have fucking watched it or recorded it uh, yeah that's a good point. it's people who are like sharing other people's hbo go accounts have you seen hot hey. fuzz yes are you aware that Sandor Clegane is the guy oh, that's... He is, the, isn't he? He's the guy that's... Yarp! <laughs> in Hot Fuzz. Never, you would never think that's the same actor. I never made that connection. Totally the same dude. Yarp! That's awesome. <laughs> but there was, a, there was a great death in that one where somebody fought somebody else and had that knife and they're like struggling over the knife and he takes the other guy's head and just goes... Oh, just goes like chop, chop, chop with the guy's head <laughs> on the knife like that. That was fucking awesome. It's like, I can't get episode. the knife to his head. I'll take the head to the knife. <laughs> oh my god. It was, it was just so brutal. brutal. It, so they brutal. started strong in terms of over the top violence and pointless nudity. They started fantastically. They Gavin, didn't... there was a point, okay? No, the there nudity. There was no was... point to that nudity whatsoever. Yeah, they never. To please is. the audience. <laughs> Kim, why is Daenerys well? Targaryen getting significantly less naked now than she did in season one? Because she's big now. Yeah. Is that what it is? She's a big deal. So she's like, no, clothes are staying on. I, I had heard that uh, starting either this season or next season, she removed the nudity clauses in her contract. Yeah. The actress Amelia Clark. What, is, what does that mean? Is that, that no nudity or that's uh, no holds barred? No, that no nudity. Oh. So that. That's not good. She had like a titty contract up to season two or something. Uh, apparently. I don't, I don't know how true that is. That's f- fucking something I read online and didn't bother looking for a source for. And now I'm re- reciting it like it's a fucking fact. <laughs> Good job, Dan. Gun, Gun Gun still go. has all the nudity clauses in his contract. Every year. Full nudity do. all the time. Full yeah. nudity all the time. But it's in reverse. It's like he wants it in. That's true. Yeah. We, we, try to like, <laughs> we try to take it yeah. out. <laughs> Whatever he move. fights for it every time. Uh, but yeah, so I was, I, was, I was really happy with it. Um, I'm glad it's back and I'm excited to get through the next nine episodes. As soon as it was done, I watched it again immediately. Really? Yeah. So why? <laughs> What are you? So you we can talk about are it. Are you at home watching at home? Yeah. How come you to come over? Because I have a fucking TV. I have HBO. You really? I mean, is that where you are now? <laughs> like, okay. When you go play golf, like you went, I went to ask this earlier. You went and played golf. Who'd you go with? It was, was my father-in-law's birthday. Oh, you went, so you went with your father-in-law? Yeah. Okay. I, I know like you're the, the one. It was even, even worse because he was really good. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. It's terrible. He was, he was amazing. I like that the one time you actually did go to Bernie's, you already seen the episode. You <laughs> watched it. We had a milestone last night. Monty came and stayed for the episode. Wow. Didn't just eat the food and leave. Pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> Although there is, he like, he manned the grill. Literally 30 seconds he manned the grill. And Blaine probably has footage of this. I was like, here, Monty, do this. I just have to go set up the screen. I go Everything into the fire? garage, come out. The fucking grill is, I'm talking four feet up <laughs> above the grill. It's just pure flames. It was pretty amazing. How many people did you have there? It was a lot. It was too many. Yeah. Yeah, you know, people are bad about RSVP and the weather was kind of iffy yesterday. So I was like, I kind of think people are going to come. I'm not sure. So I, I don't think I got enough food, but everybody seemed to be okay. So how many people, Jeff? 35? That's Holy a lot. Shit. It was a lot of people. Way too many. It was yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. But it was good. It was a fun time. Was it? I had a big fire pit and all that stuff. Nice. Yeah. 
What else was it? Was oh. it you hear something? No, you just said that. You had a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. Sounds I was, crowded. I was doing Gus a lot of running people. around. Yeah, what it just sounds crowded. Yeah. I was doing a lot of running around. <laughs> Interesting. We, we, uh, we, have, we tried to do a fun thing last night where... Do you like Uchi, that's, that sushi restaurant yeah, of that's course. in town? They, do you ever have the Brussels sprouts that are there? Yeah, they're really fucking good. They're really good. So we recreated the recipe last night, and we made them. So how do they taste? They were good. I thought they were good. If Monty was here, he'd tell you. They, they turned out pretty well. Got a thumbs up over here. Yeah, Rice, you're saying thumbs up. You, you actually came. ate food, Rice, Was it's that cool. like yeah. the one thing he was allowed to eat? No, it's good. We, uh, we should talk about... Uh, we should get... Is the green screen set up? Yeah, can we get... We should talk about the Rice Mungler and all of his weird... Like gubbins about his life. He's got so many weird gubs. Like he can't yeah. smell. Mm -hmm. Go, go talk about your window. I learned this last breath. night. What does that mean? A person can't smell. That makes no fucking sense. I don't know. His me. body's broke, Bernie, from birth. What does that mean? That he, he can't, can't smell. smell. All right, here's the, uh, the delicious duty. Oh, I give him a minute. They got to make sure the mic's they hard. Got they got to set it up. They got a whole process. Hey, let's vamp while John gets set up. Let's talk shit about it. Let's think about this while John's getting up there. Let's think think about this so we can talk about this when he comes on. Is like, at what point does a talented person and like. An annoying person. Like, when does it weigh out? Like, I don't want this person in my life. Like, this well, is just too, too much. Talented. Too much overhead, and uh, it just overweighs like what they bring to your life. Like, let's just to think me, about that. That bar is low. <laughs> For you, that it, bar doesn't a exist. A lot of people cross that. <laughs> <laughs> but Gavin or, would be the kind of person that you'd say, "I don't talk to that person anymore." You'd say, "Why not, Gavin?" It's like, yeah, they breathe too much. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> I, that. I, I would do it. Like, for example, the going back to the crutches thing. If you're on crutches more than twice a year. I'm done. <laughs> really? Yeah. You're out. Yeah. I, you know what would be Shit. great to do? I would Watch like to get out, a collection. Caleb. I would like to get a collection of people there. that Gavin used to know yeah. together and talk to them about like, <laughs> so like, what was the exit strategy like for Gavin? Like, well, we went out to a movie and then he went, all right, bye. And then he left and I never heard from him again. Until you contacted me for this show, I didn't even know Gavin was alive. I just had no idea. I saw yeah. a Facebook post once. It had 3,000 likes on it. But that was the, it. Uh, the relationship <laughs> equivalent of dropping a little vial of smoke, and I just did, I'm gone. You're out. After, after the smoke clears. So, so we're ready for uh, John over there. John, we're ready for Look you. At this. <laughs> Look at this sourpuss face. Sour you, know, you, were, <laughs> you were preparing for me to come over here. And then while I'm waiting over here, you bring up the subject of when does like someone's creativity and annoying like levels like that was the point, show? John. John, I'm only saying you're really fucking talented because you're sure shit annoying to know. Yeah, <laughs> all the gluten free and everything. So it's like how talented I'm is John? Free. You yeah. don't need gluten. You should you should take that as a compliment. You're way more talented than annoying. So for those who don't know, the Rise Monger makes all the graphic design stuff. He does all the shirts. He made the poster of the Surgeon Simulator one in like two right. seconds. He had it done pretty much the next day. He took the picture. It was it like two days, all Gavin. Right, right. <laughs> Come on. It was impressive, though. So it Rise was actually Mungla. funny, though, with that, with that poster. I, I don't know about you. I got the vibe from it. We had pretty much no interest in it whatsoever. But specifically, I'd say the main reason we did it was because it was the Rise Monger. Yeah. He came over and he's just like, we got to take a – I just want to do some photos. And I think we can make a poster. A scrubs and yeah, that. I got all this shit. Da, da, da. And we were like, ugh, fine. <laughs> We spent like 15 minutes over here, and he took like 7,000 photos. Yeah, and then That's that poster it was, was freezing pretty awesome. in here, right? It was fucking freezing was really in cool. here. And then and I decided then, to turn the fan on because I wanted to be in the west. <laughs> Yeah, we're like, ooh, let's put the fan on. And that's when we threw the, the white coats on over and the scrubs. It paid off. That was it what was we used. fucking freezing. It, it made cold. it so much so more cold. epic, though. What's that? The fan was necessary. Yeah. yeah. It was epic. It was. It looked so, good. It's a great poster. Rise you guys talk good. about yeah. your weird. Uh, broken body and allergies <laughs> and like lack of smell and gammy thumbs. Do it. <laughs> What's so the thumbs some, thing? Some, where do you, yeah, so I, 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 got, I got two things. different size thumbs. <laughs> what is that? What, What's that? what, what is what your thumb just do? <laughs> Whip your thumbs out. Remix. Look, he's got a little thumb. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> it's his fucking thumb, Bernie. Your body's awful. What is that? <laughs> I like being I like being asymmetrical. One thumb <laughs> didn't hit like puberty. Thank God it's not your space bar thumb. No, I, I, I got to go around. Okay, good. My, my thumb's my, my a mouse. toe. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got a lot of things going on. It's, nah, it's all good. It's Someone character. on Twitter says that not being able to smell is called, what was it, anosmia? Anosmia. Yeah, anosmia? Talk about anosmia. your anosmia. Yeah, I, I was born without a sense of smell. When did you realize? <laughs> okay, so I realized it when I was young, but I kept it a secret till I was probably about 11. How well? How is how young is young? Like how, how many? Okay, well, like, okay. So <laughs> just you know, like anybody. okay, you know when you're young and you make like we, okay, or like when you're Gavin and you make weird like logic about stuff. Yeah. yeah. Like I thought at first you had to learn how to smell. 
Right. Uh, and naturally. so I was like, well, I just, I probably got to, you know, you got to learn how to tie your shoes. Like riding a bike. Yeah. You yeah. got to learn. So I didn't learn. And then once I figured out that like <laughs> everyone else can smell and I could, you know, you have that fear of being different when you're young. And so I just kept it quiet. I was like, yeah. I didn't want to be weird. So kids must have walked into a room and been like, wow, it smells terrible in here. And you would just be I confused? I would just go along. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, oh, this is, what's that smell like? Yeah, oh, yeah, I agree. Just, you can fake it really easily. Did you, you ever get fucked up? Smelling you really can fake easy. smell really easily. What? Did you ever get like messed up when people would like, I mean, like they would describe a smell and you would go along with it, but you didn't understand exactly what they were talking about? I never about? understood anything. I still don't understand smell. I don't know what the sensation is. <laughs> like you don't know what BO smells like. Right. I, or a like, fart. <laughs> things like, like deodorant and stuff make no sense to me other than I'm told that I should be wearing it. <laughs> Like, even, like, showering's weird well, to me, because I'm it, like, I can't smell. Like, washing your clothes. In your defense, you are not a stinky person, so good job. You're, 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 I bet you're keeping it real. I bet your wife is, though. She's what? I bet she could be a stinky person. She, you would never know. <laughs> no, because she's got, I like, she's she got a nose like a bloodhound. She can, I shit. can't even get away with anything. <laughs> you're fucking... I bet she smells like <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah, but if I lived with someone who couldn't smell, <laughs> I would fuck? be farting on them constantly. She sits on my lap all the time and farts on me. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> she thinks it's hilarious. It's like some kind of power play. Yeah, but see, I would turn around to my friends all the time, and I would be driving a car, I'd lock the windows, and I'd fart, and it'd be fine. <laughs> They'd be in the hot box, and I'd be like, hey, let's go. So, like, if somebody said to you, hey, like, John, I'm worried we just got done playing racquetball or foosball for the last two hours, and I'm worried that I stink, and you're like, no, you're fine. You would just totally fake it, right? Yeah. I, I would just make guesses. Age. You get 50-50. 50-50? <laughs> <laughs> That's the Esther approach. I know, that's what I said, my wife says that. <laughs> Either you're stinky or you're not. 50, I don't know. 50. I don't know <laughs> what B.O. smells is. like. It's either going to work or it's not going to work. Everything's 50-50. <laughs> Everything's you 50, 50. Won't. <laughs> You're talking to a guy that farts and burps are just funny noises. Do you ever have like moments of panic like, oh, maybe I stink or something? Yeah. Like if other people say, something smells really terrible. Yeah. What's your initial reaction when you hear that? Uh, I, I just... Cross my fingers, hope it's not me. There's nothing I can do about it. You have to find, you have to have like an office confidant that you can go to and be like, do I, do I smell like shit? Michael, sure. will you be my confidant? Yes. If you will you be honest, own... Michael? Absolutely. If Brutally really honest. <laughs> like if I were to do Gavin and I said, hey, Gav, come here, dude. You, you really, listen, dude, you smell bad. You should probably go home and take a shower because you, you legitimately smell bad. That would be embarrassing to you, right? Like, yeah. I wonder if you even have that cue. Like, if I said, hey, John, you're kind of stinky today. Go and take a shower. That probably wouldn't be an embarrassing thing to you. No, I, I would be... More, it would be embarrassing, but I'd be happy that someone told me. Oh, my God. It'd be even more embarrassing. Wait, 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 am I remembering this wrong? I may, have, I, may have, I may be remembering this wrong, so correct me if I'm wrong, John. But John and I sit in the same general area at the studio. Yeah. And one day, I think I heard you telling someone else that you don't ever shit in the studio... Because you don't know when it smells bad, and you I'm don't know how much like of it. you don't know how much air yeah. freshener to use. Well, Why would you be like, self-conscious of it? You don't even know what the experience well, is. Well, but but I don't want to walk out of the bathroom and then like someone like that scares the, the hell out of me. Is like walking out of the bathroom and someone walk in right behind me, and I don't know. I take those like Febreze things, and I'm like, well, that seems like enough. <laughs> oh, I yeah. don't know. Just you must have taped the handle down and throw it in there. Like I just like I like the idea that they're so smelly. Ask them to go home when we have a shower here. <laughs> <laughs> In the building. <laughs> what I'm saying, I'm just saying, is like, like if someone tells you you stink, like you know what that means. Yeah. So I would take. I'd be like, oh god, yikes, yeah. really? And you'd be, yeah. But or if someone tells a reference you, you don't know me. what bad breath is. Yeah, I get worried about bad breath. I tell people who on a regular basis in the office they have bad breath. I uh, I like the idea of him being a kid and seeing like an air freshener ad on TV and just watching his face be just so confused about what he's looking at. Because if you don't smell, that you wouldn't understand what that is. I don't know. I wonder if anybody is like hiding it and like they're <laughs> now coming to terms with it because you're you're coming out. Do you think there's any like <laughs> top level like government officials or like celebrities that are going to come out and be like, I can't smell like Brad Pitt's going to be like, I never could. Yeah. You think Obama's paying <laughs> some dude like 10 grand a month to not tell people <laughs> that he can't smell or something like that. Somebody's got, got him. Yeah. <laughs> no, no one can know the leader of the free world has and Samia. And Masia. Well, he's good thing. <laughs> I was like yeah. little, little rice monger when he's growing up. Some uncle's like, got your nose. He's like, fucking keep it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. You're not, I'm not even kidding. I have, told, I have told several people that I can't smell. And they're like, why do you have a nose then? It's like, <laughs> what, you know, what, what that means? Just cut it I have, I have gotten that face. response. I think like, so Gavin, when I told him we didn't have bottled water growing up, he goes, well, how did you drink water? <laughs> <laughs> right. So if, if you squeeze. It, it did. 
if you squeeze your nose, do you sound more nasal? No, no. Well, yes. Yes. That's oh, just that's dummy. just air passing through. No, but I will say that I always got pissed when people said when you're taking medicine to plug your nose and you, you won't taste it. I taste it every single time. Really? So your, your, your sense of taste is super strong. Well, I don't know about super strong. I'm not like a superhero or something. But you well, try to replace the sense of smell. Yeah, I can, I can taste, though. I can actually taste. That's what I'm saying. Like, better. How, how you know, many my senses brother, do we have? What? How many senses do we have? Five. Five. <laughs> nope. What do we got? Oh, There's way more than five. Here we go. Go ahead. What are the senses? Go, go. School us. All right. Sean, you're about to get off the There's... hook here, by the way. <laughs> well, okay, temperature. Right? That's How's feeling that sense? It's, no, it's the sense of temperature. <laughs> That's one. Uh, temperature sense. Like spatial awareness. Spatial like, awareness, okay. If your eyes are closed, you know where your nose is. Two. Yeah. Temperature and spatial and that's awareness. That's sense. If, like, if you wouldn't have it, you'd be like, oh, wait, I missed. Yeah. Okay. Temperature. <laughs> always knowing where you are in relation to your nose. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> what? These are real senses. Yeah, we are. We're counting them, too. You said it's way more than five. Give me one of the five basic ones. Just run through them real fast. What are the five basic <laughs> run through ones? Like the, the, the big hits. The, the ones, big yeah. ones. The, the boring old ones. Yeah, sight and that. Smell. Sight Taste. and smell. Sight, Two. Smell. Touch. Touch. Hearing. I hope we're not offending you, John, by talking about this. All right. Yeah, and then temperature. So up to seven. And spatial relation. I don't know what that one's called, but that is a sense. What else? Keep going. Oh, I don't know. But there's <laughs> loads. It's like 30 or something. Isn't it? You got <laughs> You got like that, that was the original draft of the sixth sense was the thirty first sense. There was too many syllables. It didn't work out right. Do you so they think, had to do you the think when sense. the sixth sense came out, Gavin's like, why did they skip all the other ones? Well, how would you spatial it? awareness? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> he was like, oh my god, the sense. entire time Bruce Willis was a thermometer. <laughs> <laughs> so what sense is temperature there? If there's no sense. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with no you? one saw that twist coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I'm the whole time. Oh. oh god! Holy shit! I so I can't imagine what that's like. I honestly can't like if. But if I had to give up a se a sense, totally would be smell. But it would be temperature. It's actually yeah, better guess. off. You're better off, dude. Yeah. Because what sure. good does what good does smell do you? Violence is one. Food. Yeah, but it only makes you hungry when you don't eat. <laughs> but if you get the food, it's good. <laughs> well, yeah, if you get it, it's no, no, good. No. If if you're in a danger zone, it's true that you die that way. From Stuck what? in a room full of fumes. <laughs> oh, uh, sulfur. I'm, somebody, I'm out of it. somebody was telling me I can't remember who it was. Carbon monoxide. We were talking oh, about. Smell it, we were talking John. about. No, we were have talking. Have you ever been in a room full of sulfur? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever died from sulfur poisoning? No. Yeah, I know. I do have. A, I do have a story about how I, I almost got in danger with lack sense of smell. I was vacuuming one time in my house. <laughs> this is so good. I was vacuuming, and I was at, it was at my parents' house when I was younger, and I was vacuuming. And my mom comes up, and she's like, she's like, stop vacuuming. And I'm like, what? And she turns over the vacuum. It was on fire inside the vacuum. Like, something was short-circuiting, and there was, like, smoke. And I was like, hey, whatever. This is great. I couldn't smell the smoke. <laughs> Why are you blind? It wasn't enough to be seen. It was, like, enough in there was, like, fusing and melting the vacuum. So if you but left the gas on huh? in the kitchen, you'd be burned. Yeah. If what? If, if you, you left, left the gas, gas on, because right. it had that smell, yeah. so you can tell. We were talking know. about this at the office, and somebody said they had a friend of theirs who couldn't smell, and it was like some school project or something or whatever, and, and I think I think Lindsay was talking about it, and they had to like paint something, and the fucking kids are like, oh, we'll have her paint, because she can't smell, so they like, put her in a room to paint, and somebody's like, what? Oh, God, no. And what like, the world? Yeah, fumes like, are not the smell. the little drop dead. <laughs> <laughs> They don't know when to leave. They're just like, oh my god. So would you, still get, would you still get the headache? <laughs> yes. You would? Yes. Yeah, probably would smell. You're, you're yes. inhaling the fumes. because you're not breathing oxygen. Yeah, you're yeah. breathing the fumes. You're just not smelling them. <laughs> you, you've <laughs> never like, smelled anything. No. It's born without Gasoline. it. Gasoline. No. Not even just like, maybe you No, I, you do I, have, it's, it's, part, it's part of a syndrome I have. I can't smell it. Oh, anything. you know what would be awesome if they fix this? Like, you ever see the videos <laughs> of the 40-year-old lady who's like hearing for the first right. time? She's like, oh, what? Oh, she's like, boo. It's just amazing. Something really <laughs> strong. Can you imagine if you made somebody smell for the first time? They go, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> this is all what? terrible. It would depend Dude, on what's in the room. That'd be a totally different the video. The first thing you should do is go to the East Coast. <laughs> it's just smell. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. I guess you learn what smells what good and bad. This is the air. Or you learn just to like filter it out. Like you don't even notice. Like the world could just constantly stink, but you've smelled it your whole life and you just like ignore it. It's yeah. like when you get used to a fart. <laughs>
<laughs> you know, there was a I forget what book it was. I read a book where <clears throat> and it was a it was a fictional book, but I thought it was a really engrossing account of a guy who went back in time and he got really fucked up because he went back to basically before electricity was a thing and he wasn't used to suddenly being thrown into a non-electric world where it's like all of a sudden he was there and there was like no just general hum to the world mm, like yeah. satellites and no all that cars stuff in the distance yeah and the guy just like had that feeling of you know just like suddenly he's in a world where there's no electronics crickets anywhere in existence there. what crickets were about Yes, crickets they were, were about. about. So, so, like, that's someone, the default background sound for any night, isn't it? Someone or tweeted cicadas. at us that temperature is not touch. You morons have a computer with internet in front of you. Google it. How, John, I have a question. That's, that's temperature much funnier. Sense. I have, a, I have a, a question, John. Does pepper make you sneeze? I, like if I ingest it, yeah. What? Huh? It's not like a it, matter like of snow the pepper. If I actually breathe it in. If it yeah, irritates. Yeah, yeah. It in your yeah. Nose. That's, that's like... That's like a feeling sensation. That's not the smell of it. Oh, all right. Fair play. That's like getting pepper in your nose. You know, I actually forgot because it's so weird. You know, like whenever we talk to John, occasionally we'll be like, blah, 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 blah. And he'll say something like, well, the he fuck has you the talking front about? of a regular human. Right. He fools you with his normal looking facade. So the other day, uh, we, so we made a, are you right, Bernie? What's the matter? I'm just reading. Why wouldn't temperature be touch? Because like if I touch a pan and it's hot, I'm no, sensing no, no, temperature. Like ambient temperature. Ambient temperature is touching the air. That's the only thing you're touching. But you're not feeling it. You're what feeling you it with your skin. skin. You're sensing it. You know, technically, I hate to bring this up because it's kind of gross. Uh, but taste is really just like feeling food with your tongue. It isn't, though. That's it exactly it what it is. is. It's different. It's like how impulse. The, it matches well, that's what up with your tongue. Is. No, it's not like a little building. It's not like a piece of ham. It's like Imagine pushing a square Your tongue's like a, a bunch of fingers, like feeling it. And it just like associates it as a taste. It's disgusting. It's super disgusting. I just like the shot and then just got to John putting his fingers in his mouth. <laughs> like while we were talking about it. <laughs> No, what are you doing over there? Smelling is like a feeling as well because you're actually just the receptors of your nose are, are feeling the... Yeah, and your the, eyes are feeling the light. My nose, not yours. Your nose, not mine. Are you missing the receptors or is your brain messed up? It's, uh, it's part of a, a bigger... Yeah. <laughs> part of a whole bigger problem. It's part of a whole bigger problem. That's just like the, the anosmia is like the tip of the iceberg. Like the thumbs, those are just... Those are, just the, uh, those are the surface level oddities. Uh, gotcha. You also can't eat anything. Right. I, I have a gluten allergy too. And, what does uh, that mean? I can't process gluten. What's gluten? It's and part of the, part of the protein wheat that's found in a lot of uh, like uh, grains, like wheat and barley and stuff like that. All the like fun that. stuff. You can't have beer. And nobody stuff. eats barley anymore. It's at the medi medieval times. You're, for you're drinking barley. Yeah, but nobody eats it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we made it a thing, Gavin. Ever since that Team Lads Action News video where you kicked the coffee onto his desk, which yeah. is great, it became a thing to like fuck with John's desk. So now that there's 800 million people working here. Sometimes I got to go upstairs to the bathroom and use the potty because the two potties downstairs are taken. You're not allowed to go duty upstairs because hey, that's just hey, rude. Hey, you talk about the bathroom. Yeah, well, so um, I got to go upstairs. But every time I go upstairs and John's not at his desk, it's just like, well, what am I going to do this time? Yeah. You know, you just got to do something. It's, it's bad when because you can either mess with John or you can mess with Emily. When they're both gone, upstairs is so boring. Yeah, right. So <laughs> I'm not going to mess with you because we respect you, kill you me. too much. Yeah. All right. You know, so I go to the bathroom, play. I go potty and I'm just like, yeah, this will work. And I grabbed like the Febreze and I hosed down his desk for like 30 seconds. <laughs> you did that? We're like, I was like, <coughs> yeah, it was, it was bad. <coughs> As I was walking away and then I'm like, yeah, that'll get him. Totally fucking forgot. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to smell it. No, I didn't even know that. <laughs> I was there. I saw you do it. I was like, what the fuck are you doing that? Totally for? forgot. It's funny though. Cause you're like, I didn't smell it. You're just like. What taste weird? Because you can totally taste it. <laughs> Did I say that? It was like coating your desk. Oh, <laughs> gross. You've probably eaten it. Oh, God. That's awful. Well, you know. All right. Here, smell better next time. Let me read this thing. Uh, I want to remind everyone, this episode of the podcast is also brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. Why are razors so damn... Oh, sorry. Why are razors so darn expensive? Oh, God, please. Oops. Maybe it's because those billion-dollar shave companies overload their razors with ridiculous shave tech you don't need. Do you really need a razor with a vibrating handle, back scratcher, and laser pointer? Of course not. Uh, everyone's sick of paying out the nose for it. That's why you should make the switch to dollarshaveclub.com. Dollarshaveclub.com sends amazing quality razors and other cool bathroom stuff right to your door for just a couple bucks a month. Uh, I'm a four blade guy with Dollar Shave Club. It's only six bucks for a four pack. Seriously, only six bucks for the best quality blades you can get. They have a ton of other cool things for your bathroom. Uh, check out the Dr. Carver's Easy Shave Butter and One Wipe Charlie's The Butt Wipes for Men. <laughs> They're amazing. Seriously, it tingles in a good way. And since DollarShaveClub.com doesn't waste their money on ridiculous shave tech, they charge a fraction of what the big shave companies charge. 
Uh, join the hundreds of thousands of guys who've upgraded the smarter way to shave. Shave time, shave money. Join now. DollarShaveClub.com slash Rooster Teeth. Support this podcast and a great company by going to DollarShaveClub.com slash Rooster Teeth. That's DollarShaveClub.com slash Rooster Teeth. John, do you ever pay through the nose for stuff? <laughs> <laughs> How long do you think he was sitting on it? Uh, <laughs> waiting for that. So his it nose just works. It just smile. For everything else, it just doesn't smell. Yeah, I got that. Yeah, I got it was worth it for the joke there. No, it wasn't. <laughs> it was worth it. No, it was yeah. not. Y'all making up for the fact that Barbara's not here? Do you feel like your body Y'all has compensated scabbing. in any way for the fact that you can't smell? Like, are your other senses heightened? <laughs> like your sense of temperature. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really know where my nose space is. Space and time. <laughs> Where's really your nose? I think sense of upside downness is is one as well. Oh shit! Like you know what? Sense way up of you upside down. Is, Would you be affected by tear gas the way that other people are? Uh, well, to answer, imagine. onions affect me. Onions do affect you? Yeah, God, I think, no tear, upside I think tear gas works by affecting the mucous membranes. Yeah. Which is independent of... Yeah. Uh, Maybe he doesn't have those. Yeah, but it would affect would the eyes, eyes also. Yeah. yeah. So can you take out the smell of a human? Like, you remove the eyes, you can't would see. You, would you do that? Would you get your smell removed? Like a smellectomy? <laughs> yeah, can you get a smell... Like, what bit of your, your nose do you cut away? Or maybe it's a part of your brain. It's it's a connection in your brain that you get rid of. So you can't just scrape out a nose and then it's done. Scrape well, it out. Like sure at some point, enough damage would make it. It's like diffusing a bomb. It's got to cut the though. red wire. Like if you said cut to me, the, cut the nose wire. What part of your body sees? I'd point here to my eyes. If you said my taste is on my tongue, nah, it's like in the middle and of your brain. And I do my fingertips. <laughs> yeah, but where's your smell center? Like, is it up here in the bridge? Like, I say right here, right? Well, there's different areas. Like the front smells different stuff to the top. That's why you get used to some smells because. Something happens, right? Well, that's like taste. <laughs> with taste, your tongue tastes different stuff on yeah. different spots. It's the same with your eyes. Like uh, the cones see different stuff to the... Uh, what's the other thing in your eye? Rods. Rods. Yeah, oh, come on. Don't give them to him. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't give them to him. Sorry. I really want to see where that was going. <laughs> your eye cones. Your nose cones. So you get, you get more use of smells in the front of your nose? What smells? Is I think it, the different heights up your nose smell different types of stuff. So it's like, like kind of like taste buds are laid out differently on your tongue. It's the same yeah. way in your nose. It's like long distance smell. And <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you, have you ever tried those uh, magic berries that change your, your taste buds? We no. tried those on the podcast once, remember? Yeah, we never released that. Oh, why not? Uh huh. I've still got the video footage. You never tried that? No. We should try it and see if it works on you. Yeah. That'd be crazy. It's, what a, if, it's a miracle berry. It changes the way your tongue interacts with food. So it changes the taste of oh, everything. Oh, I remember you guys talking about that. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, we got some one time. Yeah. I've got some in my desk right now, I think. We need lemons. <laughs> they were tasted like you want some berries? I got them in my desk. <laughs> yeah. They've only been there like a year. I'll eat them. No, it's, a, it's like a little tablet. This Anything else we should know about you? There's all, we were talking about stuff beforehand. No, there's oh, more. You yeah. extra toes or anything? No. I all have right. something to ask you. What was the last shirt that you made? Say this one. It was the the I look even better in slow motion. Yeah, we have a new shirt. Yeah, and I'm gonna promote it right now. You're good. You remembered. <laughs> Can I just say that oh, Michael and yeah. Gavin should be the shirt models for all of our shirts because all those funny Michael and Gavin, you uh, that's you. Yeah. So you we just have, we haven't every photo you guys yet. take is fucking funny. <coughs> it's just every time you guys take a photo this together, this guy makes the magic funny. happen. Did you see that pencil photo? With the Team Nice Dynamite shirt, that was like the greatest photo we ever took. Well, Somebody should slap in. that on the screen somewhere. Yeah, we we were out in front of the building, and we did one picture, and Gavin jumped up straight in the air like a pencil, and he just kind of tilted to the side, and I think you said we should do it. Yeah, he was you were, John. I used to do it with Bunny like four years ago. Yeah, we used to do ago. that. Oh, like uh, the, yeah. There's a bunch of ones where Gavin's floating in midair. And, Every, everything right. on that stupid uh, where I shouldn't be pictures that you keep <laughs> yeah. sending me. Yep. I don't awesome. send them. Lindsay sends them to me Lindsay sends them to me. Like, okay, we're different. In places I shouldn't be. Yeah. But uh, it's from the, the old Congress office out the back, and there's one in the alley, too. Yeah, there's that like, one of you floating. Yeah. The good one's in the hallway, actually, where you're floating. Yeah, it's funny just to jump and tilt. That's like the Leonardo DiCaprio picture. You do the same thing. He's got a picture like oh, that. He wow. gets good plastered everywhere. Yeah. That's basically where they got the idea from, I think, and then did that with you. Oh. So yeah. they're asking me to uh, make sure I read your shirt. It says, I look even better in slow motion. There you go. <clears throat> and that's a total lie. Is that this week's t-shirt t-shirt? It's a total yeah. lie. Yeah, okay. it sure is. I look awful in but slow motion. we took one photo where we both jumped and tilted. I was like, you go one way, I'll go the other way. One fucking try. Yeah. A great photo. One great. Well, the one you got for this one is great, too. I think it's this one where you're like this. And you're leaned all the way back. Oh, for the immersion it's shirt? It's the immersion shirt. Because yeah. I'm pointing at the don't fall down a hole and he's pretending to yeah, fall down Yeah, I was pretending to fall down the hole. I thought it was fucking funny. The photo the fo- was boss. just funny, dude. Made me laugh. You guys should be our shirt models. Why do you never thing. model a shirt? What's that? I have. Too important. 
I haven't done one in a long time. The famous one is the, the, the one that haunted me forever is me with fucking cooking the, cooking with the stove and <laughs> modeling the hoodie like a gangster. <laughs> that one's been around for fucking ever. So I think I got gun shy of that thing appearing everywhere. Just, just, we, got, we got a lot of people can do it. We should fucking put a... You want to do one, Bernie? Fucking do, Captain America, do, Blaine one? in one. You want to model this one? That one? I don't want to... That one in particular? I think you already, like did, a did you already model it? No, not yet. yet. We haven't done this one yet. Gavin. Oh, that means you have to wear this tomorrow, don't I? Yeah. We can get you another yeah. shirt, Gabo. Right. Or you can fucking wash it. Yeah, that's true. Go home and wash it tonight. Fuck right. that. Um, Bring an extra shirt. All right, so your so, wife's out of town. How long? How much longer are you a bachelor, rice monger? Another week and a half. Are you sad? Just get the fuck out of here. Your wife's gone for two weeks straight. I'm pretty yeah. sure she left you, She's bro. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna find out in a week and a half. <laughs> She's been gone Plus for like one. three months now. Yeah. She's out there. I'm gonna meet up with them in California in a week and a half, and I'll be with them for a while. Aww. Oh wow! Okay, it was like the eighteen hundreds. Did you take a vacation? Day? I'll be with her <laughs> in a fortnight. <laughs> You're gonna take a, a fucking <laughs> steam a train. You're gonna get in a Conestoga <laughs> wagon, head out west. How, how many times have you monked it since she's been gone? That's a great question. How many scumbag. times have you monked it? Uh, it's hard to count. It's got to be on a regular basis. Do you use the big thumb or the little thumb? <laughs> 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 That's not Wait, a explain to me what what is the thumb serve with when you monk it? It's going up your ass, John. <laughs> <laughs> God, I'm just definitely, definitely big like thumb. Which size do you prefer? Did you really, did you really think you were to challenge Gavin on that? I just want an explanation. He brings it up. All right, <laughs> straight to it every <laughs> time. Awkward yeah. silence. Um, it's only awkward because you pointed it out, Gus. We would have just fucking coasted right over it. Sure, we would have coasted right. He through makes it. a good point. I'm sure, we would have. We would just like move straight like on. Just so we had a kind of an announcement today. We had a dilemma in Ooh. that uh, our good friend Mr. Chris Hardwick uh, invited us to go on his show at midnight, the Comedy Central show. We're going to be. I actually don't know when the show airs, but it's going to tape May fourteenth. May fourteenth. We're going out to LA to tape it, and uh, we, we they said we could start promoting it, like talking about the, our appearance on there. But there were tickets available to go see this thing. We had this dilemma because we knew as soon as we put up the tickets were available, we were afraid that like people who are nowhere near LA, like as far away as like the UK or Australia, would just book tickets just for the fuck of it. And then they wouldn't go and then we'd have a studio audience filled with people that, you know. An empty studio audience. Or you know, there's always a standby line at those kind of things. So it's, we were, I was just more afraid that it would be like there were people in LA that would want to go and then wouldn't go because there were no tickets. And there would be a bunch of people who don't know what Rushadith is that wouldn't get to see us on the show. So, but then it got leaked somehow. Somehow somebody found out about it and posted it today. So, we kind of had like very quickly all of a sudden, we were like going through all these like, you tweeted it. Plans for, that's because, because I saw it. it. Out. Yeah. That's because I saw it. Right. So, as soon as I saw it, then so I immediately went out and did it. If you live in the LA area and would like to see us on May 14th, you can get tickets. Is uh, he going to touch us like online that? Online there. Yeah, we will be touched <laughs> just like that. touch your mind. Uh, but if you do not live in the LA area, please do not waste a ticket. Gavin. Do you think that he maybe got that idea from our poster? Because that seems pretty similar to what I was doing in the poster. I think he saw that and was like, "How many was with Chris when yeah. I see him?" Just saying. So going back to an earlier conversation, I was talking. I said earlier there's something I want to talk about MMOs. I showed you this video earlier of that. Uh, it was fucked up Korean MMO uh, that's no, in beta. Don't show Monty this, by the way. He'll get lost in this if you show Monty. Uh, and it's just Whisper. like it was a video that Why shows the character so creation, good. and the character creation is so detailed. It's like. You can customize the way your character's hair rests. Yes. Like how it feathers out. Oh, or get here. rid of their sense of smell if you want to. <laughs> um, but it's, there's like a ton of options. Fuck you can you guys, even like funny. really truly design <laughs> the character. Like you, you, almost every part of the body, you can adjust the size of it uh, and the, the length and proportions. Well, that's too much freedom for a guy to have over a, a girl character. <laughs> it, it's inexplicable, but you can actually like pose them too. Like I don't know why right. you want to do I that. I just watched the kinks in like wavy hair go up and down the strands of hair. In yeah. That clip. There, there's a thing like I don't know why I've never seen a video game before. I don't know if you go forward in that video. Um, there's a part where they get to the point where they put a heart tattoo, uh, and it's like it's on the right thigh of the female character. And then you know how when you have a tattoo in a game, it's like, oh, do you want it on the right leg? Or the left leg, and it goes over here. Or the right arm, left arm, or the back, and that. Yep. Nope. You just take it and slide it all across. Put the tattoo exactly where you want to put it on the character model. Like I never. Can, see, once I saw it, I was like, I, "That's so simple. Why isn't that in every yeah, video yeah. game? Like, why do I have to have my tattoo in these set positions?" Think, you know. Yeah, you said it was like perfect for cosplayers. Like you could even des like design the size of your pupil, the shape, and of have your like pupil. shapes and designs in the pupil also. Gavin, you could set it so the oh, I can't think of the word um, the, in photography, but you can set the shape of the reflection that's in the eye, the light reflection. You can also place that reflection. 
Yeah. So if you want like a heart shaped star ref- or a star reflection in the eye, you can set that and put that in there. It's like Good lord. The people get lost in this customization. Yeah, lost. it looked like that that would be a game by itself. Is like make yourself in this character generator. Everybody's saying what game is it? What the hell game is it? Uh, I think it's called Black Desert. Uh, it's it's in beta in Korea. I, I don't know that it's even got a uh, US launch. I think they're they're only doing the beta in Korea and I read that they have uh, publishing a publisher in Russia and they're working on a Russian localization and they still don't have a North American uh, uh, publisher. So it may not even come out. Somebody will US. buy it just for that character creation thing. Yeah, but uh, we'll put it in the link dump and they also had some beta gameplay footage. The game Looks gorgeous. Really, really beautiful game. So it's crazy to think that, you know, normally you play an MMO and there's like 10 templates or something. And you yeah. just like kind of modify them a little, change the and hair And you spend about an hour and a half just doing that. Yeah. Right. So imagine that where you jump into an MMO with thousands of people and everyone is fucking different as shit. It's like walking down the street where everyone just looks yeah. totally so different. So you can make you exactly, probably. Probably. It sounds like, it sounds like it'd be a huge performance problem. Could you think that? Right. That's exactly what I was thinking. It's like, how the fuck... Is it like rendering all of this different? Well, think stuff? about it with you. It would have to be loading all the hairs in your face <laughs> up to your eyes. Well, I don't know if they've got the technology for that yet. They should. They may be an expansion pack in the future. They a lot of the initial models that you're showing off were just very beautiful women, and they were going through and like resizing, and they started switching to guy models. And it's like the first model they switched to was like a huge, like giant golem looking dude that was completely ripped, like a not like golem from Lord of the Rings, but a golem. Uh, and it was just like I was like, oh, so you can make just about any kind of character, or at least. The baseline models they have make it so you can make just about any kind of character. What I love was that by default, um, the uh, all the female characters when you were creating them all wore high heels, <laughs> no matter what. And then all of the male characters uh, were, of course, like super tough and uh, super buff guys, so, like totally playing up to those stereotypes. Mm. Mm. But uh, it, it looks well, it I mean, looks look really Gavin. cool. What like, do you mean? You're a buff guy. <laughs> Yeah, I look like a. When yeah. I play a video game, I look like Mark, just like Marcus Phoenix from <laughs> Gears of War. That's an attainable body That's type. You know what? You know about- in high heels. That's what I want to see. I want to see Gears you fucking War- be able to make your your buff Marcus Phoenix dude and wear high heels. Their suits are just like. I feel like they'd walk like Eggmen. You know you what I mean? The, like the they'd fifth- like waddle. Like they look like they're five times the size you of them. Yeah. They're just so the goddamn element. big. The beginning of the fifth element. Maybe, I've seen the whole fifth like- element. I actually watched past the beginning. I saw too. the sixth element. Yeah. Did you see the beginning of the fifth element? <laughs> yeah. That's the weirdest thing. What? Yeah. But I mean, it's like you should say. Did what you see the fifth you element? Say, did you, you know, see the, the fifth element? Well, I was being specific about which part. The bit with the bloke from the beginning. I closed my eyes during the beginning. Is the equivalent of saying, "Did you? Did you? Did you watch the middle of Star Wars?" <laughs> it's just like, just ask somebody if they saw the movie. That's the normal thing to say. You just assume that Michael stopped watching it at some point. I was just being specific. The beginning of the fifth element is nothing like the rest of the movie. Well, I mean, yeah, it is. <laughs> what do you mean? How is it not like the rest of the movie? Because in a desert and the bloke from the Vicar of Dibley is like going from the... Like, but, yeah, know, there's an alien in it. Is that, you're talking about the guy? The big, bu- the bastard aliens that walk in. They're like that. Is, is, are the bastard aliens different from the alien... I was like, you're talking about the alien, right? No, the Boston alien guy. No, like the the Vicar of Dibby. No, what I said. What you said. That's what you said, right? There's only so one alien the in the beginning of, of the movie. There's a guy and an alien. What the fuck? Uh, you're the one who fucking said it. What was it? <laughs> Vicar of Dibley. The Vicar of Dibley. Oh, fuck me, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a great show. <laughs> so what were you to say about the beginning of the fifth element? And the I Vicar of Dibley. The guy wobbles is what he was oh, going to yeah, say. Like, big... See, you even know what he was going to say. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Dude, you know, it's so bad, like, the vicar. Man, how, like, how much I know about Gavin's brain from sitting next to him, like, all day, every day for, like, two years, where even things that have nothing to do with me, I will, like, interject in and just solve before it gets to Gavin, just because eventually it's going to come back to me. Case in point, we filmed something the other day, and Kara was like, we need you to get brown shoes. Do you have brown shoes? I'm like, I don't have any. She's like, oh, okay. Well, I've got a response to this after we, after you. All okay, right, whatever. So I'm like, yeah, he, uh, I'm this size about. And she's like, okay. And then she looked at Gavin's shoes, which he's wearing now, which are brown as well. And she's like, oh, I guess, I guess you don't need them. He's like, yeah, I don't need them. So a couple days later, she gets the shoes and she's like, hey, can you try them on? So I try them on. And she's like, I also got Gavin's too. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Like already I'm like for him because I know he's going to complain. I'm like, I thought he wasn't getting shoes. And she's like, yeah, you know, I, I got him anyway. I talked to him though. So – because I, I came over to the studio to try them on. 
So she asked me if I could go get Gavin to come back and try him on. I'm like, he's never going to come back. Give me the shoes. I'll bring him to him. He's just not going to come back. And she, so she says, okay. She gives me the shoes. I go over into the office. <laughs> Gavin's sitting there. I say, Gavin, try these shoes on. I'm not going to do it. I'm like, just try the fucking shoes on. He takes them out of the box, puts the shoe next to his shoe and goes, yeah, it'll fit. I'm like, you take your fucking shoe off and you try it on. <laughs> so then he tries it on. He's like, all right, it fits there. I'm like, thank you. And then I leave and I come back to care. I'm like, his shoes fit. Here's why. Just because I, it would take him like a week to do that. I know it would. She I know bought it would. <laughs> brown shoes with a white sole. It's the exact shoes I wear yeah, every day. Yeah, but it's not the exact. We were supposed to wear matching right, shoes. Here's a question Yours for you. Yours were brown and mine were brown. All right, here's a question for both of you. Go ahead. In the paintball immersion, what shoes was I wearing? In the exactly. Yeah, this one's a little different. Nobody looks at your shoes. Give me just an answer. You're wearing blue shoes. <laughs> the shoes. Were you wearing blue shoes? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> hmm. <Bollocks. Shit. laughs> <laughs> you, you, just got yeah, you, you just did. got fucked up. You just got fucked. And even in this one, I think you can agree it's a little more <laughs> appropriate to have matching outfits and shoes. That was so disappointed. I'm yeah. sorry. Well, I didn't mean blue shoes. I meant down. something wrong. <laughs> Thanks. That's a knife for detail there. Still, trying on shoes, trying on anything sucks. It, it sucks. It took, I want to get dressed it took once in a day. 15 seconds of his time. It was a faff, though. A bit of it a was faff. such a faff. Poor Gavin, such a f- He had to take a shoe off. Don't you hate And he had to put clothes. another Michael, shoe on. Don't you fucking hate that. It was one fucking shoe. I still hate it. I still hate it. I get dressed every day. You gotta deal. undo the laces. The I'm already You're working. Such I'm a editing. Whiner. Shut up. How long? How Shut long will you wear up. like a set of clothing that you have before you go shopping for new clothes? Oh, I've got like this palette of clothes that I've got right now is like aside from the new rusty stuff, like seven years old. Yeah, un until it tears or is stained and it's yeah. just unusable. I, just yeah. I have I have some shirts that are almost twenty years old. I, yeah. This I shirt wear... is nine years old. The one I'm wearing right here it literally has a date on it. Says two thousand and five, right there. I will wear clothes until they go below fifty percent <clears throat> of clothes. What they were, yeah. They lost so their like match. once, bad, once they're half of what, once they're like covering. <laughs> Less than 50% of what they you should. Do you know what 50% of a pair of jeans would look like? <laughs> Your one leg. Your fucking dick would be, like, all over. <laughs> well, not that way. More like that. So no, you wear shorts. I catch them at, like, 80. It's like, I don't, didn't these pants used to be shorts? Oh, time to throw them away. <laughs> or did these shorts used to be pants? Never mind. Are you talking about fucking they idiot. actually lose, physically lose material, or they get, like, thinner? Is that what you're saying? Like, 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 whatever. Saying, like when, rips and tears. When they're and stuff, half right? what they used to be. <laughs> he didn't explain at all. <laughs> he just repeated what he said to answer <laughs> your question. Oh, maybe you didn't hear me. Let me say it again. Oh, I'm sorry. You must be a stupid person. <laughs> Let's see if repetition works. <laughs> uh, all right, here, let me read this other thing. Now that y'all are fucking worthless I and laughing. Ad? I got another one. All right. It's a, it's a triple night. It's a big night. Fucking like, bunts. I want to remind back. everyone, this podcast is also brought to you by Nature Box. Nature Box. Your mission, snacks. I got Nature Box right here. Give it up. Snack smarter to get in shape by summer. Yeah. Your enemy, the vending machine. Michael makes out. When you're starving at 3 p.m., give this to them. All cranky and lightheaded, the evil vending machine can seem like your only friend. <laughs> Don't give in. Head over to naturebox.com. Nature Box sends great tasty snacks oh, right man. to your door, and they're great for you, too. We're talking healthy snacks like barbecue kettle kernels, everything bagel sticks, South Pacific plantain chips, and over a hundred more. Zero trans fats, zero high fructose corn syrup, nothing artificial. Even snacks that are gluten conscious for you, John, uh, and non-GMO. With free shipping anywhere in the U.S., NatureBox is busting up the vending machine's monopoly. Don't do that right into the microphone. NatureBox is busting up the vending machine's monopoly on your midday hunger. Try NatureBox right now and get 50% off your first box by going to naturebox.com forward slash rooster teeth. That's naturebox.com slash rooster teeth. <laughs> stay full, stay strong. Go to naturebox.com slash rooster teeth. That's naturebox.com slash rooster teeth. So Gavin decided to try to share the snacks with John, who's sitting right off set. He tossed the bag at him, and it went right into the fucking lights. <laughs> I don't Gus, know how you Gus didn't break peeved. a goddamn light. <laughs> First the chewing, now this. And then, yeah, then you, like, leaned into the mic to chew Dude, on purpose. I'm trying the product. What'd you get? Right, I you got, don't. Uh, it's like a demonstration. It is a demonstration. I know. Chicken we all know you're eating it. You have to yeah, fucking do it into the mic. <laughs> we have to see piece. you eating. We have to hear you eating it. Listening uh, to people is eat is like sunflower kernels. <laughs> That's good, right in the shoe. Um. So last night after Game of Thrones, did you by any chance watch uh, Silicon Valley? I haven't taped, but I haven't watched it yet. Mm. <laughs> because because we, we watch DVR, whatever. Shut the fuck up. 
We, uh, I'm old. Did you Ryan say the same thing today? Uh, we watch it on delay. Game? The way the setup is to watch Game of Thrones outside, the way we do, we have a screen outside, projector, and then I gotta record on the cable box, and then I gotta run it outside. This is really relevant to what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> and then I gotta, like, run the cable out. So, on a delay, so I have this show right here, Silicon Valley. I have it, uh, DVR'd. Recorded. Well, of course, and you watch it like that on your DVR because... It's faster to say. You should appreciate You it. have it taped because you don't want to deal with HBO Go because you know it's going to fucking crash. I, I, don't, I don't think I've ever even activated my HBO Go, HBO Go account. It's really easy. Because <clears throat> I have Hulu Plus. Is it... I have a... I have bad things to say about the Xbox HBO. One. Oh, oh really? Not me. Go on. Well, you know, just, I don't care. The Blu-ray play oh, is no good. What, what problem are you... I've been having a problem with the Blu-ray player. If, what problem are you having? If I haven't rebooted, like, pulled the plug from my Xbox, the frame rate is, tu is turd. Really? Yeah. And, uh... In the middle of me watching a movie the other day, I had to restart it because the frame rate was guff. And then I got about halfway through the movie. It just goes, oh, Blu-ray player needs an update. In the middle of the Shit. movie. And I was like, what? And I pressed update. It forgot where I was in the movie. Oh. So I have to fast forward. It's like, why would, what do I want to update it for? It's, it's going to play it in the exact same way. So Weird. I, no I have not update. had a frame rate problem. I have other issues with it. Why don't you say no to the update then? Because you can't do it, can you? I can't do it either. Well, maybe the... Maybe the yeah, update 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 again. I will stop everything I'm doing to update a piece yeah. of software. Maybe the... Except for uh, Java. I will stop everything I'm doing. Wow. So, so uh, the, 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 maybe the update will fix your frame rate problem. It didn't. It didn't? Oh. If I've been the, using my Xbox for a long time and haven't been in the Blu-ray app, like I've been doing other stuff, yeah. it so runs like... I have, a, I have a problem with the Blu-ray player in that it doesn't play 3D Blu-rays. Right. So you can't watch the 3D version of Gravity. You put it in, it says this player doesn't support 3D Blu-rays. Really? So they said they're going to add it in the future, um, which is fine. Another problem I have with the Blu-ray player is, you know, on the Xbox One, like everything's kind of running. Like you quit your Blu-ray player, you go to a game. Yeah. Uh, so it's like if you hit like play That's all. That's crazy, by the way. I come back to like Assassin's Creed 4. I just come back after 12 hours yeah, and boot it up. Exact same, same space. space. I have awesome. issues with it, though. So it's like you're watching Game of Thrones. You can hit like play all episodes. And then you're done. You're like, I'm done with that episode. I'm going to go play Titanfall. Mm -hmm. Then when you come back to Game of Thrones, it's like, oh, okay, I'm going to hit play all again, and it'll pick up where it left off. Nope. It acts like it has no idea that you've even been watching the right. episode because it probably finished and went through on its own. Also, for some reason, Titanfall thinks I've played it for like 100 hours. Oh, really? I haven't. It's just because like, I'm done with it. I'm like, I'm going to watch TV now, and it just is running still. Here's another thing that I've noticed with the Blu-ray player. I've been watching a lot of movies recently, so I'll, uh, I'll finish a movie. I'll maybe like, pause it in the credits and then do something else. Then I'll think, say I've been playing Titanfall. Then I'll think, I'm going to watch another movie. So I take the disc out, put the new one in. I go back to Blu-ray player and it's still paused on the disc that isn't in anymore. Mm. And that crashes the app. It just can't do anything. It'll play for like five seconds and then be like, oh. And you I have to actually start the app. I'd rather have it crash than tell me, insert the Blu-ray. Yeah, and I, I swap it back out again. I've had, I had that before. So, I had something similar happen where I had disc three of Game of Thrones in. I was like, okay, time for the next disc. I put disc four in. Then I went through the menu, and then I said, okay, you want to watch this episode? It said, insert disc four. I was like, it's already in there. Because it thinks disc three is still Right, on. so I eject it, and I'm like, yep, that's disc four. I put disc four in. Hit play. Insert disc four. I'm like, Did what? you have to restart the app? I had to, I had to yeah, I had to fucking yeah. unplug it. Here's another thing that annoys me. Sometimes, the vo I use voice commands all the time. I rarely have a controller on, especially when I'm flipping back from TV to Blu-ray and stuff like that. So I'll say, Xbox Watch TV. Sometimes it will misunderstand me and take me to an app that I've not used. So it might think I said Xbox Play Music. You think people watching on an Xbox right now are going crazy? Very sorry about <laughs> that. <laughs> sorry for all that. So, music needs an update. From that screen, you can't use voice controls. Really? So it's like update or cancel, and I'm like, cancel. Did to go you say the, the name controller. of the console? Did you say the name? That's how you activate it. What? Did you say Wait. the name of the console. Xbox. Yes. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I've done that. I yeah. went Xbox Select to try and get the thing. And did it turn all green? Nope. No. You just have to go and plug in a controller. From that screen, you can't. You can probably say it. Xbox Home, right? Doesn't that no. always bring you back? You can't do anything. Everybody's fucking going <laughs> ballistic at home right now. Xbox <laughs> Off? <laughs> Would they yes. not do it? <laughs> Xbox Off. Yes. 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 Everyone's yes. mad. Everyone's there was shout an episode of, Everyone's shouting, no! There was an episode of, what was it, Go? Yeah. When we were playing, and... Uh, I think I said to you, like, I tried to turn your Xbox off, and I go, Xbox off, and it went for both of ours, and immediately we started panicking, and since everyone was yelling, because there was, like, you know, six people recording, we're like, no, no, and Ryan's screaming yes, Gavin and I, for, like, ten seconds, are like, no, 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 and then it cuts to my footage, and I move the cursor, and I'm like, oh, fuck, we're holding controllers. Yeah, you can just Like, we just that. hit A and hit no, we're all screaming no for ten seconds, because we're <laughs> fucking idiots. That's really funny.
So you guys oh. done bitching about your very specific problems on the Blu-ray player? Yeah, I'll bitch about PS3 now. What's your problem um, with the PS3? It's actually started with a very similar issue where I've been playing Final Fantasy X. The uh, HD remake just came, came out like two weeks ago. So I've been playing that and my PlayStation has been on for like 10 days. I just leave it on. I just don't give a shit. So I went to play the other day and the frame rate was just fucking doo-doo. Like the background kept like moving. So I figured I probably just need to restart the console. So I save it. I restart the console. And then when I restart it, it tells me that there's an update I have. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm never, I never fucking do updates. I'm in between the game now. So now I'll do the update. Go for it. So I do the update. It downloads. Console restarts. And then it's got to install it. So it starts installing. I'd say maybe it takes like four, five minutes. Gets to 73%. And then it freezes. And it's just stuck at 73%. Then I get an error code. And then it counts down like from 60 seconds and says, oh, we're going to restart and try it again. Restarts, installs again, 70%, fails again. I'm like, motherfucker. I think it did one more time and then it just says, oh, okay, here's your error code. Um, try turning your console off and then unplug it for a couple of minutes, plug it back in. I do that like three times, still doesn't work. So now all it says is basically, here's your error code, go fucking call customer service That'd be great so, if that's what it said. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what it should say. Fuck off. You know, it's, it's always like, it can't even tell you, uh, like, for, I found the solution. I don't know why it just doesn't fucking say that. It gives me a 12 digit number of what numbers the and letters. So instead of calling that, I go first, I'll just Google it because hopefully somebody else had this problem. Within like five minutes, I, I shouldn't even fucked around at all. The first time I got the error code, within five minutes, I find a topic from 2010 where someone has the same problem and I'm just scrolling down one page and most of it's all bullshit. I get to the very bottom and a guy says oh a friend of mine just went through the same thing um you can't have any sd components or any usb like devices plugged in <laughs> and i look down and i have my usb for my controller charger so i unplug it and i restart it and do everything and the whole time i'm thinking like the internet's fucking amazing that would take me forever on the phone uh, like calling somebody customer services and that blah blah gavin gets 70 percent, fucking freezes again <laughs> so then i lose it all over again like now i really am fucked and i'm about 150 hours into this oh game God. i really all i care about is the save data like my playstation is a model one it's an eight-year-old ps3 i got it about a month after ps3 came out so you know if it died whatever but i'm pissed off because it's broken from a fucking update and now i can't even get to the home screen so i just checked this to double check i opened the Cover, there's a fucking SD card plugged in too. Motherfucker. It's like seven years I haven't used it. I unplug that, restart it one more time, and then it fucking updates. Really? It's yeah. amazing. So I'm just like, why did the PlayStation say unplug your shit? Yeah. Like, hey, unplug something if it's plugged into the front of it. I spent like an hour and 20 minutes on Saturday afternoon dealing with this. But you got your save back. I, yeah, I got it back. But I'm have, like, I just want to fucking play video games. Have, it's Saturday afternoon. I want to play you, my Final Have Fantasy. you dodged all your lightning yet? I did it. Yeah, I did it. How long did that take you? Uh, it took me, it took me a couple days, I left, I moved on, and then I bitched out and I came back and I did like the bitch method. Cause the, there's, you can just dodge it on reflexes, but there's also one specific spot where like when you run over it, it will always strike, or like 99% of the time, sometimes it doesn't and you kind of panic, but one spot more or less it will always strike. So you know to hit X like before you even see it. You know what I mean? Like mm. you don't even need to see the flash. Like I said, I had that HD problem where right. there was a lag. It didn't even matter because I knew when to hit X. And you just put on no encounter armor and and I got it in like 15 minutes. Oh. It was it kind of pissed me off at how easy it was because I was being stubborn and I just wanted to get it and I wasted three days on it. But I fucking got it. And uh, yeah, I'm probably still about another 100 hours from finishing that game. Christ. It's a long fucking game. There's one – the thing I'm doing right now besides like finishing up the end quest stuff is you you get these weapons that let you catch monsters. So you need to like capture them for the monster arena to do a bunch of other shit and you need to catch 10 monsters of every single monster in the game. So I'm like revisiting all the areas and it's random spawns. So sometimes you run around for five hours just – it's like I need, one, I need one more bird. I need one more fucking you're, bird. You're a fucking lunatic. Yeah, yeah. It's such a waste of time, but it's... it's not even any achievements. You're just doing trophies. But, but here's the thing. It's crazy to me because it's the thing that I always did in a video game when I was younger before trophies and achievements existed because there was such a thing as 100% and there was mm -hmm. nothing else. It was... All you could say is I did everything and that was it. Right. And that's why when achievements came out, I loved achievements because that's what I always loved to do in video games. I'm like, now there's an outlet for getting everything. So now it's really cool to go back to a remake of a game that was before trophies... And now it has them. So I'm like, I have to fucking do everything. I would have done everything before a trophy existed. It's fun. I like it. All right. Yeah. 
Well, I'm glad, I'm glad you didn't lose your save. Yeah, so am I. By the way, that well, first PS3 is by far the best looking of all the ones they made after. Absolutely. I don't know if it's the best looking, but... The gloss? The, 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 no, the, I've, I've got that one too. The big dome It's one? awesome. Yeah, yeah. I love the that thing. The thing is, it's fucking loud, yeah. man. I, every time I come home, because I was leaving out, I walk in here, <laughs> like in the living room. Really? I don't even need heat. It heats my house. Did you have it for more than a year? You might want to clean out the, the yeah. air vents. That's yeah. the problem I had with mine. Is fucking the air loud, vents get dude. clogged and yeah, they're clogged it gets shit. loud. I can guarantee that. I uh, I was getting my PS3 Slim. That's what you call it. I think so. The later edition one. They that, did slimmer though, didn't they? That one was dying when I was on the last DLC for uh, Last of Us. And I just had to like fight through that. It just <laughs> shut off. And I was like, I finally went back to uh, Ashley's launch PS3 to finish out that game. Do you remember the second PS1? They actually called it the PS One. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, that was sleek. Oh, the white tiny. one. The, the I modeled the. Uh, I modeled my new controller after that. There you did. So I made it white. Custom PS Four controller. Ah, uh, I feel like we should talk about girls. Why? Who's the hottest chick in Game of Thrones? <laughs> <laughs> Who's the hottest chick in Game of Thrones? Ah, uh, Nick. We need a palate cleanser after all that fucking bitching uh, about video games. Marjorie Tyrell. I'm I'm totally in your camp. She's, she's no, pretty she's hot. I'm totally in your camp. She's not perfect though. I feel like uh, okay. perfect. I feel like <laughs> um, Amelia. Cl- What's the name? Amelia Clark. Yeah, Daenerys. Yeah, I feel like she's more symmetrical. She's not Daenerys perfect. Is pretty hot. Uh, she looks. But, uh, here's the problem. I don't like when someone is on camera and they play a character. I don't like it when they're hotter than that character. Like when you're in a movie or a TV show, you should reach your maximum hotness potential. You shouldn't be hotter in real life than you are. On that the show. upsets you. Yeah, well, it's Why? a waste of time. Everybody's working at this stuff. <laughs> got a bunch of people working, Michael. Come on. Waste what am I in this for? <laughs> what am I doing here? It's like, and she's hotter. She's hotter in real life than she is as Daenerys what Targaryen. What colors her hair naturally? Well, well you yeah, showed me dark. That. You yeah. showed me the dancing eyebrows. Gift. I said that to Pat- Patrick. Did I send you that thing of her eyebrows? They are the most expressive eyebrows I've ever seen in my oh, life. I'm going to send it to you right now, Patrick. But uh, maybe we'll get it up. It's a gift that we can put up. Yeah, her eyebrows are just like unbelievably oh, yeah. expressive. No, I would say either... Ma- What's her name? Princess Decoupage? What's her name? The- Marjorie Terrell. Marjorie Terrell. <laughs> or um, uh, Circe is hot. Mm. You have to admit. She's hot. Yeah. And she's hotter, yeah. she's hotter in the show than she is in real life. You worked with her. Shut up, John. You worked with her on uh, Dread, right? Yeah, stood right next to her. Yeah. Too scared to talk to her. I saw that movie and didn't know it was her. Yeah, I was like, what do you think of the... Uh- the woman from Game of Thrones, you were like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I was like, maybe. Because I was like, I just watched Dread. He like had me doubting. Ago, I just which, watched it. He had me doubting which movie I'd watched. And on. I'm like, yeah, it's nothing like the original, but it was pretty good. And he's like, oh, yeah, the, you know, Cersei's from Game of Thrones, isn't that? I'm like, Your girlfriends were on Twitter today talking about the guys they found hot. Is it okay to call his girlfriends? Fiance. Fiance. Well, fiance I'm, I'm getting married in a month, man. A month. Yeah. A month. I have to pick up my How are you suit? feeling? Well, I'm fine. You know, Jack's been married five months. How's that possible? Well, what does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> I was five months have gone by since his wedding. He said this year has gone too fast. Yeah. That suits so much Jack, done. though. What does that mean? I mean, Jack's like he's like I'm ready to settle down. <laughs> no, <laughs> oh, it's, it's not a Michael podcast unless we get uh. Well, t- let's yeah, Jack. I mean, Jack, you know, what do you want me to tell you? He does, you love your back. Jack impression. I love it. Look at the eyebrows. It further separates oh, him from the kids. Here's eyebrows. Whoop. Uh, it's <laughs> it'll loop right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it'll go forward and backwards though. How do her eyebrows move that much? What is happening with this? She's He's like playing in there. Yeah, she she's by far. Her the eyebrows look like two caterpillars that are about to mate. <laughs> like they're doing a dance. Looks like or a, a fight. cut scene in Viva Pinata. It's like some dude like had to hide in a little bush for three months <laughs> trying to film that. But uh yeah, they like Jon Snow. That's unacceptable. Or, or Meg likes Jon Snow. That's unacceptable. He's so no, windy. He's so, yeah. He's unacceptable. You should, be upset. <laughs> you should be upset by that. He's a windy. <laughs> you should be upset. He's the that someone who's attracted Dibley. to you would also be attracted to Jon Snow. That would, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would think about that. I would sit down with a pen and a piece of paper and I'd write stuff out. Now, who? Because I'd be upset about that. Who was talking about Jon Snow then? Meg was. Lindsay wasn't talking about Jon Snow. Somebody was. But Somebody Lindsay was talking wasn't. with your fiance. You know, stuff serious when I You already pen. said her name and then yeah. you backtracked. <laughs> yeah, well, this is my way of compensating. The person, person we know. Somebody. <laughs> person we know that we're all sensitive about. So she's sitting there talking about Jon Snow. How can you, how can you possibly be comfortable with that? Yeah, how can you be? I just boo her. Yeah. You should boo. No, she'll, she'll be in the middle of talking. I'll just be like, boo. Good call. Boo. Good call. And the, your, your fiance was like, no way. Oh, we've had discussions on this. Yeah. No, Lindsay's into the, uh, into the bastard. Gendry. The Gendry. Bastard. Gendry. He's yeah. pretty good looking. Yeah. Is that the Baratheon? He's the, the blacksmith? Yeah. Yeah, he's a cutie. I can see that. Yeah. He's way better looking than Jon Snow. I agree with you. 
I think John it was Snow 80... feels like yeah, she's gonna get like a paper cut and be like. <laughs> I know, right? You cry just, about it. He's such a baby. To be Look, fair, he did get shot with two arrows. Three. Yeah, like three. in the arm yeah. and the leg. To be fair, he I was mean, crying for two and a half seasons before he got shot by the arrows, <laughs> yeah. dude. You, have you guys I seen... Like how yeah. they just, they're like so that serious when they talk about the Night's Watch and how you can never get with a woman ever again. And then they have the argument in the last episode. Where it's like, if we kicked out everyone who shagged someone from the Night's Watch, there'd be a ton of headless men up here. Yeah. That's a good line. It was, good. it was a good line. And Patrick, I'm going to send you another one. Did you guys see the dude that they uh, recast as the mountain that rides? Yeah. What did you keep calling him, Kevin? Oh, no. Wait. Oh, sorry. You're talking about the mountain. You're, yeah. He got recasted a while ago, didn't he? No, it's for the... Well, he did, and then he got so recast So this again. is Mountain oh, 3. Again. This is the, the third, third one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because I think the first one went into the Hobbit. Became a CG person. He what? became a Hobbit? Nah. You want, hey, further in, in elaborate, literally. Gavin, in English. What does that mean? He was the, the guy in the Hobbit. The bad guy. I don't know. I can't remember the bloody Hobbit. Okay, what Gavin said to me before. Oh, he was the words. dude with the hand. Yeah, that's what I heard. No, what what, what hand? <sighs> what? God. Who's the villain of the Hobbit, dude? Was he the fucking dragon? <laughs> <laughs> what was he? Gavin said to me, I can only explain it, Gavin, that he he left to film the Hobbit as like an orc character, but then by the time the movie came out, they ended up using CG for his face anyway. Yeah. Here's so how every conversation with Gavin works. Gavin but he used half of those words now. Gavin explains time. something, he leaves off the, like, the last three words of every sentence. So yeah. he doesn't fully, fully express your thoughts. Yeah. Then when we try to go, do you mean this? You go, what are you, stupid? Yeah. It's like it's like you're mad at us for trying to figure out what the fuck you're saying. Because I already had this conversation earlier today. That's yeah, the, not that's, with Bernie that's or That's the new guy, right? That's that the dude is, they cast as the yeah. mountain who rides. Look at the size of him compared to Cersei. Look at his Cersei. chest. They must be so heavy. But Same as human. They recast another guy, too, yeah, in that, the season premiere. Yeah, the toothy guy. Dario Where do you find a guy that big? <laughs> that's one of the words Gavin was calling him, the toothy guy. Yeah, that's the guy who in the, everyone was, was like, to his, he's the long-haired guy. He also called him a toothy gorp last yeah. night. <laughs> he's the like, guy. They he's replaced the, the toothy He's the guy who came back with the, t- the two heads of his other right. blokes. And everyone was like, oh, he's so dreamy. I was like, are you kidding me? He's like, oh, what the <laughs> I'm glad they recast him. We he's almost like, went into a spit take. That was I all did. last I night, did. dude. That was all last night. But I'd be, I'd be worried, Gavin. I'd be concerned. Corp. You should have a discussion. You should have a discussion. Out of all the guys in the show, she's excited about Jon Snow. What and is- she was excited about the toothy gulp. Before <laughs> that. Are you serious? Yeah. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> that explains this, though. Okay, well. Now, get excited about that guy. That guy's huge. You'd have to climb up his leg to give him a hand job. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, call that the, we call that move the shack. You'd have good support. You'd have to bring ropes. <laughs> Fucking secure yourself. Do you so think he has, like, he has, like, <laughs> hooks, like, in him? Like, he's got indents he, he, for people to already climb him? It's like, I mean, it happens. He's got a beginner course. A yeah, broke, yeah, yeah. A bro course. He's got, like, a red pad and a blue pad. <laughs> 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 you I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm so happy that show is back. I got, I got, I got so good. It sucks being caught up on that show. It's like Breaking Bad at the end because it's like waiting a week to see the next hour. It's just, it's too fucking much. It you went by way too fast. You wait 20 years between Star Wars movies, <laughs> but waiting a week between Game of Thrones seems fucking impossible. Uh, we had this conversation just because uh, we were talking about some other guy in Game of Thrones, and we talked uh, about a lot of dudes again. Yeah, but this is but you mentioned Pycel. And that wasn't what we were talking about, but I ended up looking him up anyway. And Pysel's I did, the old doctor dude. Yeah, Pysel's the old dude who is actually he's pretty fucking Easter. spry. And he's a he's a shyster. Um, but that's the guy, that's the villain from The Last Crusade, Indiana yeah. Jones. And I had no idea. I was like, holy shit. And Bernie's I'm, like, Bernie's like, holy shit, that's him? He drank from the wrong cup. <laughs> <laughs> we, Fucker's old now, man. We talked about that in one of the podcasts. Oh, we? really? Yeah, was I that the same podcast where we talked about the, uh, the actor who it. swallows the fly in the middle of a take, and they use that take? I don't remember. Could he swallowed be. a fly in what? No, it was a different actor, but it was in Indiana Jones. Oh, you watch it go zoop into his yeah, mouth? Yeah, it flies on his mouth, and it goes in, and he swallows it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that dude's a badass. Dude, can you imagine if we were doing a take of immersion of fly flew in your mouth? It's true. <laughs> and you ate it? We, we would never finish that take. We would have to call a break. Yeah. That's like the end of uh, Star Wars Episode Three. Right after, spoiler alert, right after Anakin gets his arms cut off and his legs, if you haven't seen the movie yet. I mean, I don't know. It's nine years old. You might not have seen it. Um, 
<laughs> when Anakin is like screaming and he's all writhing and shit, and he goes, "I hate you!" Like he spits a fat loogie right out of his mouth. <laughs> it's <laughs> really funny. Yeah, it's like a big draw motion, dude. Yeah, we should. It's a big compile gob. all the spit moments, like accidental spit moments in movies. There's probably a lot of them. That's a meaty one, dude. Yeah. Like you can see what he had for lunch in there. <laughs> Did you see the video recently of the the guy or, or the person cut together of all of the on screen deaths in Game of Thrones from the? I heard first Jack three watch it. Yeah, it's like they show like every death. That happens in like three minutes. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so it's. Like, I think we were showing that at the exhibition that I went to. Oh, really? Yeah, so it was it's like a, it's a, a quick way to get caught up. Oh, yeah. Game of Thrones is so cool. I like that the uh, the fool guy, the guy that uh, Sansa spared because Joffrey oh, was going to yeah. have right. Right. Yeah, the knight who's now like the jester or whatever. He was the guy who Martin Freeman was shagging in the ass in a Ali G movie. You ever seen that? I never an LG movie. No. They get locked in the room. Did you and, like, ever see? They, they get rescued within like three minutes, and they're they're doing it. Did you ever see the Charles first like... third of the Ali G movie? <laughs> it's actually the last third, Michael. <laughs> well, I don't. I haven't seen it. It's a okay. great movie. It's about time to wrap up. All right, oh, we ready? Go. Shucks. So thanks everyone for watching. We'll be back on Wednesday with another episode of the Patch. Hey, we'll WrestleMania be... was last night. Did you guys like? <laughs> no. Did, did we'll... you, you know, okay. some people all of a sudden start That's tweeting about face. WrestleMania. Yeah, I just like. I'm, I'm grateful that people tweet we'll about that. We'll be at PAX Why? East this weekend yep. with 342. We have our panel, All the I believe, on Friday at noon. It's yeah, on it Friday. is at noon. Yeah. Uh, you, you guys will be there. And you're going to be, be me, Gavin, Ray, Lindsay, <laughs> Monty, and Bernie. I will not. I will, yeah, I will be in attendance at PAX, but I won't be at the booth at any point in time because I'll be busy with other stuff. You going to the panel? Are you going to be at the panel? Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. I guess so. I think I'm. It all depends. Doesn't sound I'm in. I'm in. Like a yes. I'm in. Uh, I hate saying where I'm going to be, but I'm going to be in Los Angeles on some stuff, so it might extend into that, and I might not be able to make it in time. If I get there on Thursday night, yes. If I get there on Friday night, then obviously not. Cool. We'll okay. just move the panel. Uh, all right. So yeah. come by. See yeah, us. Good luck with that. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye, everybody. Rise monger. So roll up Bunny Burns and Gavino with Jack and Joe. Then there's Lindsay and Barbara and I really miss Jeff a lot. Mr. Teeth.